I'm your co-host Edwin Budding, and this is my other co or my co-host Pikachu nine four two. Pika, say something to the people. Something. All right. So we got we don't have a big tournament coming up this weekend, so we're not going to do a tournament preview at the end or a super major preview. But as the post Royal Flush episode of the Smash History podcast, we're going to be talking quite a bit about Royal Flush. So in a first. Pikachu, why don't you interview me about my experience at Royal Flush? Okay, how how were you? How how were I what? Can you say that again? How was Royal Flush? Royal Flush was a pretty great event for multiple reasons. So I got there Thursday night. By the time Friday, by the time day one started, I was ready to play. My pool was at 11 a.m. I think. I ended up getting ninth in my pool. Not not very happy with that. Lost to New Jersey's finest, then I lost to Bab. But it was a, lost to Bab. But it was a pretty. Uh. But it was a pretty top level event, mainly because despite there being 330 people, there was a ton of top level talent. So each pool had like five to six people that could reasonably make it out, and. Mm-hmm. Entering the event, I had no illusions. I didn't think I would make it out of pools. I have I haven't gone to a tourney in half a year. I've mainly just played net play and done a lot of reading on the scene, and writing of course. But in general, I I wasn't too unsatisfied with my play, even though I I wasn't happy with my placing. And the more I played through the day, the more it sort of it sort of reestablished all the things that I love about Melee, and it was really nice seeing all my Yukon friends again. And it was also nice meeting Smash History podcast uh, guest, Give Me That Wheat, and r- rooming with them. And also meeting up with Dingus and Chroma as well from Melee Stats. So Sick. It was actually very nice seeing them. Of course, there was a pain in my heart, an ache, that my Smash History partner, Pikachu, despite living only two hours away or so, could not make it to this event. Listen, you can blame my mom. (laughs) And so I I would say as an event, it ran eerily smoothly, which is funny because before the event, before the event, there was a lot of controversy over the fact that there weren't going to be many setups, that the venue was not that big. It was going to be in a casino. It was going to be, a ton or 330 people there but i would say for the most part i didn't have that many complaints about how the tournament was run the only thing i would say isn't even from my standpoint it would be from the standpoint of someone who who who's actually a top player and i think most top players would agree that the doubles format of keeping it a separate day from singles works much better than trying to mix the two together on finals day i agree and I think part of that is because if doubles is not done in one day or, or done in two days, and the two days being Friday and Saturday, I just feel like it either tires out players or it gives players a sense of illusion that they can sort of let themselves go and not worry about the organization of double, doubles and having to play top players on a certain day. And the biggest example of that is Mango and Lucky getting extremely drunk in pools and then playing Hungrybox and Zoo and losing. Well, they were going to lose to Hungrybox and Zoo anyway, so... I don't think they would lose to Hungrybox and Zoo if they were sober. Hey, Hbox and Zoo took a game off left and a nice. Hbox and Zoo are, are a good team, but I would not bet against Mango and Lucky against them if they're sober. And dude, I'm s- they, dude, doubles got me so mad. <laughs> and they've literally talked on stream about this so, before. about, And they talked earlier this week about how losing to Hungrybox and Zoo was really embarrassing. And how they thought they would play them first thing Saturday. So they spent Friday getting drunk only to find out that they were playing them in the evening. So doubles I, got me really mad. <laughs> we, well, we can go on to doubles in a bit. But just, just to sort of recap cap what the Royal Flush, how it... Just to sort of recap Royal Flush and how it ran, I think the main problem I had through all three days was that there wasn't enough setups. And for an event with 300 people, that kind of sucked. Because, let's face it, if, if you're at a national, there should be enough TVs to have three people on every setup. There, shouldn't, there should never be four-man rotations. 
And I think the, the I, I don't know if I totally agree with that, but okay. No, it's it's not always realistic, but I, I can tell you that at Shine, I could always find a setup with just two people, and there was always room for playing friendlies. And I can't say much for Smash Roulette because I wasn't a part of it, but I heard it ran okay. But I definitely think, contrary to what I've, I've seen people write on Twitter, I think there should have been way more setups. But as a whole, I would say the event ran really well. And I think, nice. despite their... Oh, wait, actually, there's one more thing. So on day three, they told all the... I think the New Jersey Melee people that brought setups that they could take them home. That was really dumb. On day three, before singles or double starts, there should have been at least... 30, I, I mean, I guess I wouldn't know the exact number, but there should have been a lot more setups because there, there sure as hell was space for it, even with all the additional seats for top eight. And the fact that I couldn't get good games in beforehand was kind of annoying. But of course, this is nitpicking what was otherwise a phenomenal tournament and with an extremely good top eight for Melee and Smash and pretty good Smash 4 Grand Finals. If you're Dude, not... That, that Smash 4 Grand Finals was actually really good, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but I would say the I would say Royal Flush, I would give it around a 8, eight. A, eight out of 10 as a tournament experience, but the top 8 is probably a 9 or 10. It was a really good top 8. Yeah, but before we get to singles, we got to talk about doubles. Are Left and the Nice ever going to win a doubles? They had game? that. They choked that. They choked that so hard. I'm so mad. <laughs> so heading into the event, I think they were the number one seed. No, the Armada oh, and Andrew no, were the you're right. seed. You're right. But that that was only because I wasn't there to yell at them. <laughs> Let's just point that out. And I think uh, one of the games. Continue. Sorry. One one of the set defining moments I think was when Android accidentally killed Armada, but then proceeded to win the one v one I think against Ice. Yeah, dude, that 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 whole set got me really mad. His grand final set two, Leffen and Ice totally had that. They were up two zero. They were destroying game three. I don't know how Armada and Android came back. It was that talk that Armada Armada gave Android or whatever before game three. Dude, I'm so mad. <sighs> It obviously, I it obviously wasn't that talk. I'm sure they made in-game adjustments. Dude, I'm so, I'm so mad. Left and a nice loss. That's like the one time I've ever wanted Left and to win, and he lost. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not a good event for Left and, but we we can get into that. Terrible <laughs> event for Left and. Terrible event for Left and. He actually had a really bad run at the tournament. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> do you do you think that there is really, given that Mango and Lucky got out early because of shenanigans? Do you think there is any other chance of us not seeing a UGS versus Muffin Grand Finals? <sighs> like if they didn't like, like if they didn't get drunk, Mango and Lucky. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I think they would have made it to Grand Finals. I I think so too because I had them winning the event. Oh wait, no. I I, I'm sorry. I I didn't phrase that correctly. I meant. Assuming Mango and Lucky get drunk and get DQ'd or whatever. So oh. basically, was there any shot of their of Grand Finals not being Muffin versus UGS? No. But Shroom Destro J made it look really good. <laughs> How good do you think Shroom and Destro J are for static teams? <sighs> they, they gotta be up there now. Did you see their set against Armada and Android? That was, they almost won. <laughs> I was more convinced by how dominant they looked against Grab and Go. Grab and Go is, you know, Moon... Moon is a really good teams player, and I guess DJ DJ Two is pretty good despite a lot. I think even myself saying that sometimes he holds Moon back. But the I I, I also agree. I think he holds Moon back. But, but the, this but the, this was a good tournament for them. It, one, it was a good tournament for them, but the way that SJ and Shroom still beat them pretty convincingly, I think showed me that they're a legit team. I don't know if they can beat a top tier team like UGS, but. Would you be too surprised if SJ and Shroom say beat? I'm trying to think of like what team. I I want to say Pewfat, but I don't know if that's jumping on the. If that's no, playing. I could see I could see them beating Pewfat. Like, can't you see a set where Shroom just plays out of his mind? He manages to hold off S Fat and SJ just runs a train on both of them. Ha ha! Shroom holding off S Fat. Yeah, I, well, I in singles yes. Ha. I, in singles yes, that's funny, but in doubles I think I think the. 
chaotic presence of SDJ gives them breathing room. By the way, I think Shroom is just as good at doubles as S Fat and Pew Pew. It's hard to differentiate between the three because the thing is, like, in singles, it's it's so clearly S Fat being the best player, and I want to say in doubles it's the same thing. But differentiating from, but but like differentiating between the three and doubles, it's it's difficult to put to assign value to them, you know, because all three of them are so proficient. So, um, do you? Do you put Four Leaf Mango at number three, or do you put them at number four? For teams right now? Yeah. Are we assuming that Turnip 2 King is number one? And Well, no, I'm not including Turnip 2 King, because they're obviously number one. They're number zero. Yeah, I think, at, I think at this point it's fair to put them at number zero. Yeah. Um, but I think number one is really close between UGS and, Lef and um, Leffen and Ice, but because UGS keep winning the big events, I'll give them the slight edge. I, th um, I don't think it, I don't think it's really close because UGS keeps winning the big events. Like it doesn't matter if Muffin is sending them to losers because it just always feels like I think this is the second event or third event that Muffin has sent sent them to losers, but then got reset and lost. I think Leffen and Ice are definitely number two. Are definitely number two. And I think three and four is between Four Leaf Mango and Pufet. Are we really living in a world where UGS is the best doubles team? It's felt like. Well, it's well, they're not. They're not. They're not the best doubles team because Armada Music King exists. Right, but they're number zero or the best static team because Armada yeah, Music King is only Summit. Yeah, they are the best. I don't. It doesn't really feel like they're the best because the last tournament didn't they literally get third to Plup Music King and Mango S Fat? Well, that that's what I wanted to say. How, can we really say that UGS is? But they, but but they won Genesis. They won Royal Flush. Like. I can't who, really say anything. Who is the low? What is the lowest combination of players in terms of individual perceived value that you could imagine beating Armada and or can imagine beating UGS? Wait, wait one second. What's up, chat? For people watching, I, you guys like us talking doubles. You prefer we talk about something else right now. <laughs> For people listening to the podcast or watching it afterward, I'm not sure how you'd be dealing with it. It's all right, guys. I'm going to talk about how salty I am that Marth has been losing to DK in the mid-levels for a while. It really sucks that Ringler is beating every SoCal Marth except, like, Wieners. It sucks that a Marth like me... We lose to a better player, but still a DK in New Jersey's finest. I'm just sick of Marth losing all the random mid-tier matchups that he should be winning. Because he's a better character. I'm going to actually take a look at the Royal Flush bracket right now as a, as a side note. Oh, actually, Pikachu's back. Everything good? Yo, I'm good. I was just talking to the, I was talking to the chat about how I'm sick of Marth losing stupid mid and low tier matchups. Like Reeve losing to Green Ranger? Like Reeve losing to Green Ranger, like me losing to New Jersey's Finest, like Wrangler over every SoCal Marth that isn't Wieners. Dude, Wrangler took a game off Crush. Can we not talk about that? It's, it's... Wait, did you talk to Crush about that in the interview? Please tell me you did. I forgot about it, but I brought it up with Wrangler. I brought it up with Wrangler after... After Royal Flush, when you're hanging out on Sunday night or Monday what you morning, say? he just said it was funny because Crush or er, Fistball Moon said, Good games, I had fun, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Wait, Crush said that? Yeah. I mean, you took a game off him, you know? I'm sure. Does, does Crush ever say he has fun? <laughs> if you watch my interview with him, you'd know. I don't care. I don't like Crush. I actually don't like Crush as a person. Someone, someone clip that. That's so funny. What? Just my, my podcast partner casually just saying he doesn't like Crush. I don't. Alright, what we were talking about, the so the question I asked you before was, what is the lowest combination, or give me the two players with the lowest combined perceived value that you could imagine beating UGS. I mean, Kirby Kaze and KJH took them to Game 5, so... 
How about Duck and K? Could you imagine Duck and KJH beating them? Duck and Prince of Boo took a game off them. Um, Actually, this maybe not Duck. I'm trying to think of like what would give them a pro. Like what character combination would do really well against Peachy? I guess. Double I mean, or Fox I mean, or. Armada could just go Fox. Yeah, that's the thing. Dude, Armada's too good. I can't. It's hard because Armada's just so good. Could you imagine a team like Flop and Axe beating UGS? Flop and Axe have beaten UGS. All right. Flop and Westball is beating UGS. They took them to Game Five last hit. How about Westballs and? Was Rome? I don't know. I don't think they would beat UGS. Me neither. I don't think they'd show up. Do you, what about Drug Fox and MACD? Could you imagine them beating UGS? Yes. Because MACD's top ten in teams. I think that's the lowest ranked team that I can imagine. Dude, Moon DJ beat Drug Fox MACD. I couldn't believe that. Do you think Slox and Swedish could, or is that going too far? <sighs> I honestly, I'd need to see it before I make a firm decision. Because Slox and Swedish surprise me every time. I can't believe they beat Plup and Axe. That was so surprising to me. I think Slo Slox and Swedish is like a second tier team that can compete compete every now and then with first tier teams. Are they the best Northeast team, or is that Crush and Slox? Nah, Swedish Slox is better. Is Slox the best teams player in the Northeast? No, Moon. Oh, right, right. right. Well, is it is it Moon, though? Yes, it's Moon. Moon and Prof beat Leffen and Ice. Okay. M Moon's really good, man. Yeah, I... I'm just I'm hesitant to say Moon because he plays Marth in teams. Yeah, so. I know that's that, I know that's easy. Dude, Marth is underrated in teams. Look at all the best teams players. We got Moon, Pew Pew, and Ken. I feel like it's such a. The thing is with Marth is it's so reliant on your synergy with your teammate and being able to like finish a combo and being able to swing at the right time. But I don't know if that's like. I don't know how to value that skill ahead of just skirmishing. No, the weird thing is, is that that I think that's true. But Moon, I don't think plays that kind of style with Marth in teams. How would you describe it in teams for Moon? I don't know, cause he's like the only Marth I see that like goes like on the offensive, like in teams. Like the other ones, like usually stay back and wall out, and like keep the and like keep teams separated and everything. But M Moon just goes in. He's the one that goes in front, while the fox usually stays behind. I actually, I, I wish I knew teams a little better so I could, I could sort of analyze Moon's doubles gameplay. But, but I'm not, I'm not so familiar with watching him. Indeed, is that usually how they play with Moon as the aggressor? Yes, that's usually how they play. Prof but, lets him go aggressive too. Prof, I think. But with with a fox like Prof, I feel like Prof would let Moon take the back seat every now and then, so it wouldn't feel so risky. Mm, I haven't watched Moon Prof enough, but eh, I don't care about doubles. So. <laughs> All right, uh, do you want do you want to talk about singles now? Quite frankly, no. All right, we're gonna talk about singles right now. <sighs> This is my least favorite tournament. All right, want to start from top sixteen, just for convenience. No. Because then we don't get to talk. Then we don't get to talk about Bonfire Ten. Dude, can you imagine being Bonfire Ten, like going to Game Three, I think twice, twice against Cobalt and Lucky. Getting what? I mean, granted, he got kind of washed by Lucky. Dude, he almost beat Cobalt. That was at, Cobalt SD like five times that set. <laughs> okay, we're gonna okay. Let's 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 Oh, Junebug be wait wait. Can we talk about how good MDVA did in we, the early stages we'll, of we'll, we'll round get, two? We'll get to we'll get to MDVA in a bit, but I want to do this as a side note to, from Cobalt. Cobalt went last year from being thought of as one of the best foxes against Sheiks because of his few wins against Plup to losing. To the Asian one, a, Fal a Falco in pools, who uh, is apparently around mid level. No offense to the Asian one. Asian one's okay. 
I think he's a little better than Delby. Delby beat Cobol, so. I heard the Asian one was, like, worse than Delby. No. Uh, so, it's... The sorry, Delby, I don't sorry, think... Sorry, Asian one. I don't, I don't think Delby goes to a whole lot, so I think it's hard to compare, but from... Well, Del, Delby beat Vans once, so, yeah. I guess Delby's a little better. I'm just saying that Asian one beating a player who last year was thought of as, as like, a top 20 to 25-ish player or so, and mm -hmm. who three years ago was thought of as top 10 to 15. Yeah, just, rip, rip Kowal. And, it's the fault. <laughs> oh, what's up? What's up, Coex? We have in chat. Coex actually goes to school with the Asian one, and after he beat Kowal, Coex told me that the Asian one was, like, around our skill level. Because when I was watching him versus Kowal, I wasn't even, like, super impressed with what he was doing because it was just regular Falco stuff. And I asked him, like, is, is, is that just it? And he said, yeah, that's, he just played well <laughs> and beat him. And Cobol SD. Asian, Asian wants to take a game off Stango, too. Yeah, and Stango is like the Northeast Spacey Destroyer. So Albeit Stango definitely bopped him to other two games. Yeah. And, then, and, and then Asian one lost to Vish. How do you lose to Vish? Vish lost to Bonfire also. That's another fun thing about the tournament. Yeah. So yeah. how rough is it for the Asian one that he might have been able to make it out of pools had he not beaten Cobol? Because had he not beaten Cobol, he would have had to play Bonfire, and I think he would have... I, I, don't, I don't think he would have beat Bonfire. But I'm saying like it would have been an easier path than beating Vish. Bonfire would have down smashed him five times on one. Dude, oh, okay. You never let you never let me finish my thing on Cobol. He went from being a Sheik Slayer that's that had a good record with Swedish and had a few sets on club, or well, more than a few sets, to losing to Junebug, an unranked Sheik nationally, who is just above top ten in MDVA. And I think Junebug's Cobol win, I can't tell whether that really increases how we view him as a melee player or whether it shows how far that Cobol fell. I think, well, I also, I think it's a little of both. Because I think Junebug is getting really good. He's been bringing Lod really close, consistently beating Smash God and Zane. Junebug hasn't won a tournament over Lod in so long. I don't think he's ever won a tournament over Lod, but the last two tournaments they both attended were Grand Finals, Set 2, Game 5. I mean, Lod is like a, Lod is, a, I would guess, by skill level, a top 50 player. If not better. Did, did you did you see Junebug lot at the recent cave? Yeah, it was, it was really close. It was so close. Holy crap! It was game five, last hit. Junebug was winning, and then he died in air bed and died. <laughs> Just the, I, I don't know. I I can't tell whether to be disappointed in Cobol or whether we come to expect thirty thirds at nationals at this point. Don't worry, Cobalt will come back. This is just one of the Cobalt slumps. He'll be back. We all know he'll be almost top 10 at one point again, and then he'll fall back down. The, the thing with Cobalt is it's just baffling because I, I know he's weak against Falco, but Sheik is a matchup that he's supposed to... It's, it's not quite Icy's level of confidence for Cobalt, but that's supposed to be another matchup he's really good and experienced in. And if he's losing to Sheik, that might not be top 100. The day Cobalt loses to a random Icy's is the day I lose all faith in him. I mean, on, honestly, I, I just feel like in, for fantasy, you, Cobol is the most, one of the most unreliable people because you don't know. He needs that Icy's bracket or he needs, some, he needs an Icy's or Marth bracket to randomly do well. Yeah. Speaking of people who also did not do well at this tournament, why don't we talk about the person that drowned in pools, Alex19, a.k.a. the person who tied with me. At this tournament, I actually forgot he was at this tournament. So Alex, apparently, to his his credit, Alex's flight was delayed. He had to come in the morning. Um, I think commute here and immediately start playing. So Alex pretty clearly had Alex nineteen pretty clearly had a ton of out of melee issues. Then I'm Who did he lose to again? He lost to Milo and and Young. Young just and Young. We're, remember, we were talking that Young is going to beat Phil. But oh then, yeah, but then Phil, but then Phil got DQ'd, so Young had to beat well, Alex. Phil DQ'd instead. himself, so Young beat Young. Alex instead. So that's good, on, dude. We we called it. We called Young beating a Spacey. Yeah, 
I think Young would have beat Alex regardless, probably. But I Milo is... Mm. I, I hesitate to say regardless, just just out of cautiousness, but... I think he would have at least taken a game. I don't think Young... Young is not that far off from Zealous, is he? Like, a tier? Oh, speaking of Zealous... Yeah, that's another upset Zealous. Let's talk about how... Let's talk about how he beat MACD and then lost to Mafia. Mafia's a Mafia's a beast against Marth, dude. Yo, Mafia had a good run too. Is this the return? This is a this is a really good comeback tourney for Moth. Wait, we're talking about pools. Let's stick to pools. I'm looking I'm looking three and see Oh, one thing that we should mention, uh Leffen versus Cool Lime. How Leffen like oh my God. JB three'd him game one and game two, but then Cool Lime almost full four stocked him game two. It was funny. Dude, Cool Lime and Lunar Dusk, man. So, Cool Lime, I, I actually, uh, Wheat was, Wheat actually Dude, was rumored I don't know with why, Cool Lime, I don't know why I Wheat, think. I don't know why Wheat likes Cool Lime so much, I don't understand. Cool Lime, or, Diego's a really smart player, and he, uh, he, he's, he's quite articulate about the game, and he's just, he's not, like, cocky, he's just very sure in himself, and he, he knows a lot. Like, he was, he was talking about how the last time he played Chu, like, they went last stock, and how he actually felt pretty confident if he played Chu again. Yeah, I Cool Lime beat uh beat Smuckers. Yeah, he he wasn't too surprised about that. Although I I heard Smuckers through. No, Smuckers was up 2-0 and choked super hard. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I, I heard Smuckers through it, but good stuff on Cool Lime. This is definitely a really good tournament for him. Dude, Our, Smuckers um Smuckers is positive on Diskit and Nintendo this year. So are we? That's, are we surprised by Vikram getting getting out over Wenbo and Pudgy Panda? No, I we un, I underseeded Vikram by accident, and then I fixed it. I thought Wenbo so. was Wenbo and Vic. I thought Vikram would be around the same level. So I who else did he beat? Vikram. Yeah, he beat Wenbo and who? Uh, I have to look at top thirty-two bracket to double yeah. check. Is that all the pool stuff that's interesting? I can't think of anything else. Four percent. Jojo beat four percent. Oh, that's right. Let's go, Tri-State. This is a this is a pretty in the early part of bracket. I thought this was really good for Tri-State, and it was pretty good for MDBA also. Green Ranger, Green Ranger beat Reeve. Oh my goodness, it was so good for Tri-State. The Asian one beat Cobalt. Boyd beat Boyd beat Reeve, but I don't think that's that much of an upset. Boyd beat Reeve. Oh yeah, he did. No, Boyd beat Green Ranger. Yeah, excuse me, but I don't think that was that much. Wait, are you sure? No, I. This is saying Boyd beat Reeve. Let me see. Or it's saying that Boyd made it over Reeve. But no, Boyd definitely Boyd beat Green Ranger. I know. But I don't think that's much of an upset. No, I don't think it is either. Uh, hmm. nothing else I can really think of. Oh, Nurok got upset by Surfs Up Hail Satan. I don't even know who that is. Uh, he's a hidden boss from New York. Well, I, or I from actually Ohio, know. Excuse me. I actually know who he is. But like, I don't think he's good. Is, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Soup is right. Smucker should have beat my case. Okay. Wanna know the? Okay. Wanna know the funniest back-to-back -back results of this tournament? What? Definitely Jerry, the netplay god, aka oh, Mike that's not... beating AKA... this kid Boogie three two, and then losing the. Losing, I think, to Slug right after. I heard he played really good versus Diz, and then by the end of the Slug set, he completely forgot how to play the matchup. Yeah, I, I heard I heard he and Diz was really close, but that when he played Slug, he just totally... He was so hyped from beating Diz, and he also just forgot how to beat Ice Climbers. Dude, I can't... I actually... Dude, I thought Jerry might have been able to make top 16 after he beat Diz, honestly. What do you think? Is just Jason making it out over Bones and Aeon an upset? I don't think so. Uh, just Jason Bones. Cool. How about Wasabi and Jerry over Mr. F and Louis, Luigi Ghost? Oh, yeah, that's right. Wasabi beat uh, Mr. F. Is that a big upset, Dude. you think? That's pretty good. It's pretty Wasabi's... good, but Wasabi's gotten a lot better. I don't. Th I wasn't that surprised. No, Wasabi's, Wasabi's, not, Wasabi's not that good. Wasabi is like Arcadian. Or he's high rank Arcadian. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he beat Equal, but like... All right, I don't, I don't see anything else. Uh, Big kid barely didn't make it out of pools. I'm so mad about that. I like, I don't know why I'm a big fan of Big Kid. 
he's young and he's been playing for a really short period of time. And he beat Lin. He beat Lin. Oh, he oh, and, he's, oh, oh and he's taking games off DJ now. So and oh, and he took Smuckers to Game Five. That's pretty good. Yeah, but Smuckers isn't good versus Puff. So hmm, let's take a look at let's take a look at Phase Two then. Let's talk about Mafia beating Hugs and Lucky. I was pleasantly surprised by him beating Hugs. Not so much Lucky because they they went really close last time. And yeah. I mean, I would have expected Lucky to win it regardless, but actually, Ma Mafia has taken a set off hug, so I think they're two and two over the last two years. Damn, Mafia is just a legend. I think this ninth place was more impressive than his SmashCon one. I think it. I think it's a good return to form for Mafia because I. I think he had been struggling a little bit before yeah. this tournament. He recently took a set off Slocks too, so he's looking better. Mm -hmm. he still got six. He still got six zero by Mafia yesterday though. <laughs> The other thing I was really, the other thing I, I mean, six up by crush. Um, the other yeah. thing I was super impressed by was Cactar. Uh, Three going S fat. Yeah, it just Dude, came out of nowhere. Just, he almost beat Mike Hayes. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Someone is outside my house for some reason with a car. Oh no! No, this is really they're gonna, weird. They're gonna kill you. What are they doing? I just texted my mom. Who is outside our house? This is so weird. Is it scary? Kinda, dude. This is actually low-key terrifying. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. I hope he doesn't have a gun or something. Dude, this is this is so scary, dude. There's a, there's a car. It, it's looking menacing AF right Wait, now. Wait, I, I need to see. Show me. <laughs> dude, look at this. Do you see, can you see it at all or no? No, I can't. You can't? Okay, well, there's... Okay, I'll, I'll like, narrate it now. Sorry, guys, if you want us to start talking Smash before I get shot up. <laughs> I can, oh, I no. <laughs> How close is it to your house? It's, like, re it's really close, dude. It's it's in my drive... It's in, it's in my driveway. The lights it's are It's in on. your driveway? Do it you know the... You don't know, you don't know whose car it is? Dude, it honked also, so I don't know if it's calling for me or it's calling for my mom or something. It's really oh, no. weird. Oh no! <laughs> Should I call my mom right now? Oh no! Oh my god! Don't die! Don't don't die! <laughs> Dude, why would why wouldn't my mom text me if, if if my mom was outside or something? I would think she would text me. This is actually really scary. Oh, okay, it's pulling out right now. Wait, did he pick anyone up? No. So he went into your driveway, he honked, and then he left. Uh, it looks like it, but, oh wait, hold on, is he leaving? Please go. Please go. Please go. Oh my god, this is so scary, dude, I don't want to leave my room. Then don't leave your room. <laughs> wait, hold on, I'm texting my, should I call my mom right now? Dude, this is actually really scary. <laughs> Watch, it's gonna be like my dad. He, he'll probably be back home early, and he just like needs someone to hold the door. But the thing is, like, if it was someone that needed me, they could have just texted me. Dude, All this right. is actually really scary. No, it's okay. They left. They left. They left. They're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Okay. Okay. So what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, we were talking about phase two. <laughs> we were talking about. Wait, hold on. Let me check chat. <laughs> oh. Okay, he's streaming my own snuff mill. Anok's a nerd. Well, if Anok uh, dies, we know it. A, minor a minority in America versus white Boston, white Bostonian, unwinnable matchup. Feels bad, man. <laughs> okay. Um, um, we were talking about Cactuar. Yeah, what a weird, what a weird showing for I, him. I, I, I called Cactuar beating us. Fat. I'm just gonna say that. I, I, all right. I'm gonna say take the opposite approach and say I did not see that coming. That came out of I nowhere. I, I love. I didn't think he three zero him, but I know. I know he's taken. I know he's taken nor sets in NorCal at like foundries and stuff. But no, I, it wasn't. It wasn't at a foundry. It was a legit set. But I just would not. I think that makes us fat like one and six against top fifty foxes this year. Probably Cactuar is just really good, man. I have him at, in my top forty now. I just 
You know, I know SFAT has lost the ditto, including a local ditto to Alex19, but if you had to- if you told me that Cactar was going to come back and 3-0 at a, at a national event, I would have been really surprised. And and you guys know me. Like, if you can look through all my predictions, I almost always sleep on SFAT. And the fact Dude. that he lost to Cactar is really not good for him. Yeah, I think... Yeah, and then Cactus went up 2-0 on Mike Hayes and then lost. Yeah, I mean... He's got to figure out. He's got to figure out that matchup, man. Who? Asphalt. Yeah, Asphalt. And then Cactus beat Android, and then he lost to Mike. Uh, his his. Oh wait, we talked about him already losing to Mike Hayes, right? Yeah, he lost to the Moon though, but his Moon set was pretty close too. He actually looked after four stocking Mike and taking game two. I thought he was going to take the set. I was pretty impressed with how Mike adjusted. Whatever, man. Um. So, what what happened after that? Uh, I'm taking a look. So, Coolime making a good run, beating Smuckers and Green Ranger before losing to SFAT. R2D beat Ryan K, which is pretty good for him. I'm so mad. Staten Island, man. Staten Island should have won. In a in a pretty in a pretty surprising fashion, Soul three one Dreffen. Oh, that's right. Soul beat Dreffen. Holy crap! I can't believe that happened. Yeah, Dreffen's been. Man, Dreffen is actually kind of falling off right now. Yeah, I didn't talk about it because, because I didn't really think about it at the event. But if if Dreffen had beaten Soul, he would have had to play Zealous, Mafia, uh-huh. and Hugs on his way to top 16. Oh my god, he could have... Oh yeah, I remember I was saying if he beat Soul, he could have made top 16. And then he lost to Soul. Yeah, that's actually very... That's actually pretty disappointing for Dreffen. Because that was... Those are three people that I think he would have ha- had a pretty good shot against. Yeah, that's that was um that's his uh that's Soul's third top 100 win in the past two years. Yeah, what do you? I th- like the three events he's attended. What do you think of 40 second three wanting milk man? I saw it coming. 40 second was playing good. He took a game off shrooms, so. Wait, give me a second. Okay, all right. Apparently, m- mom had a. Okay, so you guys want to find out what happened with the car story, dude? Yeah. Okay. So apparently, my mom had an aunt over, like one of our one of our friends in our social circle. They were having dinner or whatever, right? So, the aunt's husband went to pick her up, and he was hopping oh. outside. Makes sense. For her Makes to sense. Come out. That's all. I mean, a, a little rude, but but at yeah. least we know I wasn't gonna die. All right. I think. What do you think of Android's tournament? Is it good for him, or is it kind of what we come to expect? 17. It's what I it's what I expected. I, he looked good against Drug Fox, but otherwise nothing out of the ordinary. Drug Fox, I gotta say, had the funniest SD to start off game four. He was holding on to ledge, I think, and then he starts falling from ledge, right, as if he's fast falling. And then mm-hmm. mid fast fall, he air dodges right underneath battlefield. Think- oh, I remember that. I remember that. It's one of the silliest SDs I've ever seen in my life. It was so stupid. <laughs> Uh, all right. Do you want to go in t- top sixteen, or do you want to talk? We're not, to- we're not. We're not done yet. We're not. We didn't talk about uh, Shroomed, Lucky. That's that's top sixteen. Late. Or is there anything that? We- oh, right. No, no, no I'm sh- looking. Shroom. Wait, dude. What Shroom's- about DJ losing three zero to K Pan? No, I saw that coming. Yeah, I I wasn't too surprised by it. But like, um, Shroom six zero dices. Yeah, actually. Yeah, what am I talking about? That's huge. His Marth looked really good in it, too. Yeah. I'm still pissed, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good win for the Marth. Dude, screw F-Smash. So hard. Shu had, like, two of those games. And then F-Smash. I actually, uh... That's really promising for Shroom that if he can... Granted, I think this makes him 2-1 with Chu that over the last two years. Yeah. So it's it's not that big of a sample to go off of, but this tournament overall is a really good return to form from Shroom. It we see more of the top fifteen type, top ten player that he was and has been for the last five years. So yeah, maybe we were overreacting with with saying that Shroom was in a demise. You know, it's a good return. He was to form. one. He was one stock away from making his first top four at a major ever. Yeah. Do we have anything to say about 
Chu and Zhu, because Zhu got bracket fucked, to put it lightly. Running into Chu, playing him super patient before just losing steam and. Did you did you see game one of Zoo Nintendo? No, but I heard no, but I heard that Zoo is really upset after. I didn't see him af immediately after the set. No, but it game one of Zoo Nintendo, Zoo like almost four stocked him, and then he got destroyed the next three. Yeah, I I guess he. I think he's close to figuring it out, but he he looked much more confident against Chu to start off the set. I mean, he beat you last time. Yeah. But, I mean, just like typically Zoo against Ice Climbers, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just glad Zoo's going to a tournament again. He hasn't been to one since Genesis. Where would you put Zoo based on the eye test for skill level? Top 50. That's it? Maybe. Not, not, not top 40. I think he's top 50. When I think top 40, I'm thinking including... Talented NorCal people that don't go to that much, like Cactar Zoo. I think Cactar is top forty right now. La I don't know about Zoo. What about La Dandis? La Dandis is probably yeah. La Dandis top forty. Are we surprised at SJ three winning ice, or do we, or could we kind of see that going? I know we both. I know we both had ice winning, but I'm not surprised oh. SJ beat him last time. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't super surprised. Even though I had Ice as the favorite, what I was surprised was what I was surprised by was that Ice got three would by Nintendo after. I wasn't that surprised. Ice isn't that good against Ice Climbers, and he he and but every game was really close. So yeah, I I don't know it. It just feels. I thought that after losing the Discord Boogie and Army, that Ice would not really have a problem with Ice Climbers, especially because, and I think it's maybe because of the Wobbles Rage Quit and Cruise at Summit that I perceive Ice to be better at versus Ice Climbers than he actually is. Wobbles didn't Rage Quit, he lost and then he raged. Yeah. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. More accurate. Listen, I, to get your Wobbles back straight, you're talking to Wobbles' biggest fan. Uh, are we really? Okay. Are we surprised uh, at... Actually, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. Axe as well was his biggest fan. Are we surprised that Slugs run, 3-0-ing Vish, 3-0-ing Chain Ace, and then 3-2-ing Jerry fresh off a Disc Kid Boogie win? I think his win on Jerry was good, but otherwise, he just got a lucky bracket. He got Chain Ace, because Phil got DQ'd. What about Messenger 3-1-ing maybe in the Peach Ditto? Oh, that was really good for him. That was super good. I was very... Messenger beat somebody good in pools, too. Okay, someone, someone is, or two people in chat are talking about Isis Falcon problem. I'm not sure I agree with that. I know he lost, nah. he lost a nun at Don't Park on the Grass, and I, I know he lost his latest set with SQJ. He lost to SQJ at Don't Park on the Grass as well. But, but he also beat SQJ the two times before that at SSS, didn't he? Yes. I, I don't know if that's enough. Data points to say that Ice yeah. has it. I don't. I don't think he has a Falcon problem. I think it's just you know, um, SJJ and none are top twenty players. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not that Ice has a Falcon because I, I I don't think he like plays the match particularly bad. You know. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, he did lose to Wizzy the last time they played. Wizzy's a top ten player. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I don't know. I I I hesitate to. I hesitate to say that Ice has a Falcon problem, even though he's lost so, um, four of his last sets against notable Falcons. Maybe he does have a Falcon problem. I don't know. I'd have to see. Um, I'd have to so, see a little more in the matchup. So what? What else is there to talk about in top sixteen? Okay, the most tilting chant ever, or tilting trash talk phrase. After KJH goes up 2-0 on Crush, they're in the middle of a tight game three, and I think Shik Shik or, or I don't want actually I can't attribute it to one person because I I don't exactly recall who started it, but the chant of where were you when Crush reversed KJ th reverse three would KJH was so tilting to the mid rust crowd that was watching the event. I'm pretty sure it caused like. KGH was the girlfriend to start crying after he lost or something. That's terrible. Or at least get really mad. 
I mean, New England was super drunk, but I, I have to say, it's, as someone that was at the event, I don't think they went that far, but I definitely think they were obnoxious. Like, in the Crush versus Homemade Waffles set, uh, after, or, or excuse me, Slocks versus Homemade Waffles, after Game 5, Homemade Waffles had like a, not yelling, but he had a pretty tense conversation with some of the guys from New England. He was like, you guys, like, I get you're rooting for your boy, but you, you, you gotta respect players, you can't put me down. You know, I could talk trash back, but I'm cool with Crush, or cool with Slocks, he's my boy, why are y'all being obnoxious and stuff? And then in the set after that, I saw the last. They didn't. Or New England crowd didn't seem that obnoxious versus Slocks versus Mac D. But oh, I, I forgot about Slocks Mac D. Slocks destroyed Mac D. Yeah, three zero. Good. Which was um that surprised me because Slocks isn't that good versus Beach. Yeah, it's a good sign for him. But the but I think the the especially notable thing that people were not upset at. I don't want to make too much of a drama about it, but or make too much drama about it. But I know the where were you when Crush reverse three O KJH was definitely the thing that that got Midwest people upset. It's a pretty can great. Just, it's a pretty great can I just talk chant though. I don't like New England. <laughs> you don't like New England, dude. There was a point like a couple months ago where I loved New England, but now I realize who they really are. Is it because numbers stopped playing melee because Crush got really good? It was because numbers stopped playing melee, and then I was able to see past my ice climbers' bias to what New England really is. And what is that, Pikachu? What is New England? Terrible people. Terrible people. We have great sport. Or we have great sports teams. The the Celtics kind of. We have great sports teams. Excuse me. You have the cheating Patriots. <laughs> yes. You're the number yes. one seed Celtics. Yes. 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 Good for you. Well, oh, granted that the Celtics are kind of getting blown out. So, but so what you're telling me is that you guys are entitled, are entitled and privileged. Oh, excuse me, you're from New York. New York is like the land of privilege and entitled. No, people that's no, that's California. Sports. When it comes that's to California. sports, when it comes to sports. Oh, sports. New York is so entitled. You guys have the most successful sports franchise, and you're the evil empire of sports. New York when yeah, you, but the, yeah, but the difference here is I don't care about sports. You guys complain and cry when you don't get an individual sports team for each friggin' borough, okay? I don't care about sports, so. Oh, oh I'm not getting into this with you. Uh, okay, so going to going to top 16. Nintendo'd be prof. Yeah, that's a, like, again, I guess, it, you know, this is a good return to form for Nintendo, beating prof, beating Mike Hayes, beating Ice. Yeah, he lost a shroom though. Yeah, but that's not. But we, as we, we can't say it, as we established earlier, it's a good win for shroom. Mhm. Mm what do you so think? So what else was there? In top sixteen. Yeah. Uh, Mafia three running lucky. That's pretty good. That was pretty good. I, I moon, don't think lucky. Moon be ca I don't moon think be cactus. I don't think lucky played that well, but I, but it's definitely a good sign. I actually really liked how Mafia played the whole tournament. He looked really good against Mango. He looked much better against Mango compared to what he looked like at Summit, where he looked Dude. lost. He was really aggressive in all of his matches. He did really aggressive flow cancel nares. <laughs> yeah, I think Mafia plays a little more balanced than people give him credit for. People think of him as like a rushdown peach, but I think he's a lot smarter than that. Me too, but I also think he played especially rushdown this tournament. Maybe I'd I'd have to I'd have to either ask him about or rewatch some of his matches. What do you think? Just, what I think of what? What do you think of Shroom's Marth against Leffen? It was funny because in the Discord chat, um, everyone was talking about how we have literally zero faith in Shroom's Marth against Leffen, and then as we were talking about that, Shroom won. <laughs> you know, I I used to kind of laugh at. Not laugh at, but I used to laugh about the idea of Shroom's Marth being a serious thing in tournament. But I think he's been practicing it a lot more seriously lately, like over the last year and a half or so. so. If you I've look, always said that his Marth was good against Sheik and Ice Climbers. I've always had faith in his Marth. Want to hear something kind of cool, but also kind of sad? What? Or I can ask you a question that's cool and sad. What? Do you trust Shroom's Marth to take... To possibly take a set off left and over QPU? 
No. We had this discussion before. Are you sure about that? Yes. PBU looks completely lost against Lefty when they play. PBU is better than Shroomed. Versus Fox? Yes. <laughs> you said Shroomed's Marth. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? You know I'm right. Yeah, I guess PBU beat Silent Wolf at Big House 6, right? PBU did beat Silent Wolf at Big House 6. Yeah, maybe I should, I should, I should probably give PBU a little P more credit. PBU took a set off, PBU took a set off SFAT this year. <laughs> Congrats. I'm pretty sure SFAT is still but this, like... But that's more than Shroom has done in like the past okay, three yeah, years. Okay, no, that's fair. I'm just so saying yeah. maybe, maybe Shroom should play Marth in the tournament more often. Maybe you should bring him out on FD. Do you know his Marth lost a non-trunk Marth Dodo to Dean Una? Okay, we're gonna move on to the next topic. I don't like where this is going. I mean, he did, and, but then in losers, he lost a drunk Marth Ditto to Chris Best. Okay, I don't want to talk about this anymore. This is making this is making me doubt my newfound faith in Shroom's Marth. <laughs> um, okay, okay so, let's put it uh, this way: Do you do you trust Shroom Sheik to beat Leffen in the set, or do you trust his Marth? His Sheik. His Sheik look, looks lost against Leffen. It's Leffen versus Sheik. Nah. Oh, Supa's right. Shroom should play Doc. Oh my god. I'm gonna just ignore Supa in the chat. No, do you not remember the freaking Big House set, love you, though? Love you, George. Yeah. The I, Big House 4 set? That set was so good. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was that was also like three years ago. Yeah, but it was so good. Come on, man. It was two and a half. Alright, I'm looking through the back end. Uh, what, do you think of, what do you think of me telling you that Crush would beat Chewed at for 13 and you doubting me? I doubted you because Chew 3 0 him last time. So? Crush got better. Crush, Crush did get better. Crush is better than Chew Dat. No, he's not. He's better than Chew Dat and his character it doesn't carry him. I, I I just said that to get you upset, don't, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Look, I, I don't actually think Chew Dat is carried by his character. He's an all time legend. Chew is Chew is carried the least out of all Ice Climbers players for by his character. I think I don't think Nintendo is carried by his character that much either. Me, me neither, but I think Chu is carried even less. And also the fact that uh, this this is separate, but still related to Crush. But the fact that Crush went up two zero on Drug Fox and blew it. Oh, that sucks. He was like a hit from beating Drug Fox or Stock. I don't. I was so happy about that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> You're so petty. You just don't like him because he. You don't like actually, him I re actually, I really like Sammy, so... No, you, you, you do like Sam or we like Sammy, but the fact that you, you're just happy he beat Crush. I was happy he beat Crush. Dude, can... I don't, I don't like Crush. You, you only don't like Crush because he kills Ice Climbers. Two, he's mean. <laughs> and the, yeah, the, and the third what, else, what other reason do I need? <laughs> no, the third reason you don't like Crush is because, because he denies it when people say he's good against Falcon. <laughs> That's the other reason, because he is good against Falcon. Did you not, like, the last week, wasn't I praising Crush? Wasn't I being so nice to him? Didn't he also lose to Gatsu, or Gatsu also, at the same tournament he beat SJ? Yeah, it was game five last day, and he choked. He was, like, up 2-0. Uh, he's also even, and even or, like, closely, like, very close with Smuckers in their head-to-head. -head. It's 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Two but two. Crush isn't bad versus Falcon. He's good against Falcon. I forgot to mention, what do we think? Do do we have anything to say about Crush taking a game off Leffen? No, I have nothing to say to Crush. I mean, he, he kind of got destroyed the other three games, but... Yes, he did, which was very good. That that kind of convinces me more than one straight straight win, but it's still... I don't know. I'm, I think if... I'm trying to think of... Why you gotta bring up Crush? I'm so mad now. Well, because I just interviewed him earlier this week, so... By the way, if you guys don't know in the chat, you should definitely check out my interview with, with Crush. I wish I was there to help. No, because you would have just you would have been like, "Why are you so mean, Crush? You're beating all my favorite players." Why are you Why are you making your voice higher pitch? My voice is lower pitch than yours. No, that's not. Well, it might be, <laughs> but you're younger, so I'm making it higher. That's not how it works. Um, whatever, man. I know. I know. Plover wasn't that surprised by it. But I'm, 
I was still a little shocked by Moon what? beating SJ. I wasn't. I actually predicted Moon would beat SJ. Were you just that convinced by their last set? They didn't. Their last. They didn't have their last set. What, what, what do you mean last set? Moon didn't beat SJ last time. Yeah, he beat him at frame perfect. No, Moon beat Shroom at frame perfect. He also beat SJ. Oh, he did. But that's not the reason. The reason why was because um, Moon's good against Falcon. So. I yeah I before I before I thought he he knew how to tech chase Falcon pretty well but he just choke on edge guards and play a little like jumpy but I think he I think he's a little more disciplined now uh one of my one of my friends Coex actually has the rule of Falcon as Marth which is that you just never dash back and you never jump unless Falcon dashes back or unless unless Falcon dashes back or unless Falcon jumps that's his rule. But I'm at Anyways, uh, yeah, you, I, th I also think Wizzy's... You don't have anything Wizzy's... to say about that? Just generally? No, I don't. I, I just, I don't agree with that matchup at all. With your opinion on the matchup. So, um, I think, also I think Wizzy's better versus Marth than SJ. Yeah, SJ, I, I don't think, I, I used to think SJ was really good at it, but I'm starting to, by results, I'm starting to kind of doubt it. Oh, by, by the way, none are SJ. Right now? Yeah. SJ is way more consistent and less noisy. None is kind of like super unpredictable. I don't know what to expect from him. If he, if, I, li I literally have them right next to each other in my rankings. If if none like runs, if none is on Mujiking side of the bracket, that helps him. But if he, but if he has like insert insert hidden boss Peach in his bracket, or if he has like West Balls in his bracket or something, I know he, or I know he's beaten West Balls, but he. But like, if he, the point is, if he has a Falcon Slayer in his bracket, I, I kind of worry for him because he could just randomly lose. I think yeah. the way Taffo put it is that watching none play melee is like watching a really talented bas like basketball player or like athlete play pickup basketball. But when they have like an open layup or something, they go for a dunk and they just like slam their face against the backboard and completely miss. That sounds about right. Uh, someone in the chat, or George in the super in the chat says, opinions on Moon trash talk East versus West. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't see it. So. I was there in person. So, so Moon, Moon and Phil and like basically the rest of the West Coast and Tri-State were basically shit talking each other the whole event. We'll get into another thing with NYC and Tri-State later, but basically East versus West. Um, there was just a lot of shit talk because it was New Jersey's first like non-Apex National in a while, so people were really excited. A lot of top-level competition was coming out of region to play. East Coast versus West Coast rivalry was super, super hyped. But uh, I don't know what people were super amped about from the East Coast, because even though we had a lot of really good early wins, West Coast still got further this tournament. Shut up. Yeah, so like people were saying... Oh, East Coast, East Coast, and, you know, I'm one of those people I was rooting for East Coast, but our, the closest thing to an actual, like, Northeast representative we had got seventh at this event, so I don't know what we were shit-talking them for. And he I mean, Drug, Drug Fox is East Coast. Yeah, but, yeah, he is, but I'm saying Northeast. Drug Fox is also, like, Drug Fox, I guess, is East Coast, but he, he's East and, Coast. And Hungry, Hungry Boss is also East Coast. Okay, fair. He's on the east and he's on the coast. I don't want to hear this South Pole crap. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. I just, I just think the tra trash talk is kind of silly, but it's entertaining. We'll we'll get into like regional stuff in a little bit because that's that's one of the take takeaways I want to discuss at this tournament. Like so, sort of the um, regional rivalries and everything. But uh, let's go into top eight. So, what do we think of very, very very good top eight. Yeah, this is excellent. So, well, the top eight started with True versus Moon, which is a really entertaining set, even though I... Very, 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 very good set. I don't think either of them played that well. Like, Moon, Moon sort of overextended a lot versus, like, controlling center, which is usually what he does really well against Sheik. Um, Drug Fox versus Nintendo, the games are close, but I think it's a pretty good... It's a pretty good textbook way of how to play Fox Ice Climbers. Yeah, Drug Fox has definitely worked on the matchup since getting bodied by Chew at CEO. Yeah, I think he 
I still think he plays it kind of risk heavy, but he does all the theoretic or I don't because that's kind of regurgitates in their narrative of Jerk Fox playing like optimized. But I think he he plays a very like risk of he plays risk adverse for like tech skill and like messing up or or not sorry. I think the better way to put it is that Jerk Fox plays a very like high technical ceiling kind of play style in general but it shows against Dicey's where he either looks great in the matchup, like taking two stocks in a row, or he gets wobbled twice in a row, you know? Yeah. And he always felt committed to it. Like, he never he never hesitated against Nintendo, even even when he got wobbled twice to start the set, or when he died twice to start the set. So, after that was, was next Hungry Box Leffen? Uh, I forget which of the winner sets came first, but I, I think it was Hungry Box Leffen. That was a pretty standard hungry box left inside. Dude, so I actually I can't believe he did it against Leffen in tournament, but I saw on Hungry Box's stream like on the week. Oh, are you talking about the thing? The no, thing? Okay. The down throw? No, no, not the down throw. I knew he wasn't gonna hit that. But Oh he almost did though. He was very bare he was barely off. <laughs> no, the more the more thing that I, I gasped at in the tournament was when Hungry Box unveiled the up air at zero percent rest. Oh, I knew that. I've I've known that was a thing for a while. I I saw him do it on stream. I saw him do it on stream, but I didn't think it was gonna work against Leffen. That completely caught me off guard. He did it right at the start, but um, Leffen ended up winning the match. But how how would you say the set went? It was pretty. Hungry Box looked pretty comfortable in the set overall. I would say. I, I don't think Leffen looked particularly good. Do you think he just like? What do you think he could? Do you think he just played sloppy? I think Leffen played pretty mediocre the whole tournament. Okay, well, we'll get to the rest of Leffen's tournament. But I thought I thought he could have won that set. I just... I didn't really feel it. I didn't feel like he could win. I felt like he could have won. It's just Hbox downloaded him and a few, like, things went in. It's like... It just sucks for Leffen again because th this is the matchup that's supposed to be, like, his second best after Peach. Right? Yeah, probably. Like, you couldn't imagine Leffen losing to a Jigglypuff outside of Hungry Box last year, and even then... I mean, like, to be fair, how many people in, like, the top 30 could you see losing to a Puff that's not Hungry Box? SJ lost to a Boo, dude. Yeah, that was once. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying that Hungry Box is supposed to be Leffen's, like, good thing, and the fact that Left and a zero and three against Honey Rocks this year is really bad for him. Yeah. Then yeah. uh. Do, I don't know if it's something he's like doing wrong in the matchup or if each box is just out clutching him. I think it's a bit of both. I just don't think Leffen's been playing really well this year. Yeah, his record against the top five is atrocious. He gets number five right now on Legacy, in my opinion. I don't. I don't feel confident for him. That's fair. What do you then think of Armada Mango? I think it's a typical Armada Mango set, except that the third, that the last game just was really was a complete stinker for Mango. It was a, uh, it was the third best set of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, third best set. And the first uh, two being, of course, Armada Mango. <laughs> no, best set was Mango Shroomed. Screw all you people. It's not better than either of the grand sets. Yes, he was. Yes, he. Yes, it was. Mango Shroomed was the best set of the tournament. Okay. Well, before we talk about Mango Shroom, because I don't want to argue on this, let's talk about Drug Fox, Drug Fox? three o Sammy three owing Leffen. He finally got his freaking big win. And you know, like, I want to say I'm not surprised because Sammy's consistency against all the tier two players was really good. But, yeah. And also, like, he's kind of. Sammy's developed a reputation as the Fox Ditto guy, but the fact that he three stocked Leffen, I think, to start the first. He just he destroyed Leffen the whole set, honestly. It's just really, it's a great win for Sammy, uh, and definitely shows that like not only does it solidify his strength, but it puts it on another level. Like you could say someone like Lucky is really good at the Fox Ditto, but also acknowledge that they can't. That someone like Lucky most likely isn't going to beat Armada or Leffen. Whereas I feel like with Drug Fox, like 
but once you get that win, I feel like your chances against them go up. So, uh, so what do you think of Drug Fox versus Axe for number ten? I think it. The thing is, even with his lot random losses against like Daryl and who that's he, it. Who did he lose to at Dreamland again? He lost to Hugs. Yeah, even like Daryl Hugs, sort of the weird and Plups Luigi like. Uh, I can't count Plups Luigi against him. Plups Luigi is really good. But like. Even counting some of his bad losses, just his consistent record, like his really good spread against, like, Axe, like Axe's rank wherever he is to like number twenty is really good. Also, he's positive on Chu and S Fat this year, yeah, which is really good. No, 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 he's. I think he's even with S Fat. No, he might be positive. I think he's positive. He's. It's one one or two one. Why don't we double? Or why don't we check right now? Yeah. But yeah, Drawfox Fox just looks really good. With the exception of his losses to Wizzy, he yeah. looks really good. Yeah, except for Falcon, and even then, I think he's too, He's back and forth. He's starting to turn. Sorry, I know I'm stuttering, but... He, he's positive on Wes, he's positive on Swedish. I think he's positive on S2J this year. Yeah, he's 2-1 with S2J this year. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, it looks like he's, he turned the corner on S2J. I think he's... I think I might... I think I put him above X right now, but it's very close. Yeah, because Axe has Mango and Mewtwo King. Yeah, he has two wins on Mango and a win on Mewtwo King. That's really good. But Drug Fox's consistent head-to-head, I think, puts him just barely above. I think you could argue either one for number 10 right now. What is Axe's worst loss on the year? Meds. At, at a national. At a national? Uh, I need to think about that. Um, hmm. I wanted to say R two D Lou. Is that? Oh my god. Let me let me let me look. Um, let me let me bring up Plover stats. I'm looking at wheat stats right now. Plover stats are better. I have Plover stats bookmarked. Oh my god. So based on 2016 SSBM rank, which is kind of outdated, but still a decent, decent uh, way of looking at things. Uh, Axis three and four against the top one to five. He's five and four against six to ten. Six and five from eleven to twenty-five. Four and zero oh against twenty-six or six and zero oh against twenty-six to fifty, and he's twenty and fifty or twenty and thirteen against the top fifty overall. So we know Axe he typically doesn't lose to people worse than top twenty-five, and he goes back and forth with everyone above him. Whereas with Drug Fox. We know he's one and five against the top five, but he but he finally got that one. Oh, Axe's worst loss is Android. Oh, okay. Is Android's Android's a little better than Daryl? I would say. Android's way better than Daryl. Yeah. Exactly. What are you talking so. about? Yeah, not a little. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah, but Daryl was also in freaking January. He lost to Android like his last tournament. <laughs> How would you compare? Ug- Hugs is better than Android for sure, right? Yes. Why do you keep thinking Android's so good? <laughs> Android is good, dude. You have him top forty. That's I don't, so weird. I don't. I don't have him top forty. Anymore. No, I don't have him at all. I never had him. Yeah, but you were you were debating with me about it. I asked you if if I asked you would you put Android top forty ish because by eye test he looks it, but his results don't have it at all. His results are actually horrendous. <laughs> Just, he definitely got bodied by Minji. <laughs> okay, we're, we're not talking... I, I wasn't even going to mention that. I was just going to say his his record against like fellow top 50 Sheiks is really bad. And same with losing to Ryan Ford. But anyways, looking... Sorry, but looking at Drug Fox, um, I think if you were to make an argument for Drug Fox over Axe, it would be that Drug Fox is slightly worse against Gods and probably a little more prone for an upset. But he's much better against the second tier of players. Like, Axe, I think, is very negative on West Balls. He's very negative, or he's starting to okay, get I'm, really negative. I'm, on I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off, I'm gonna read off Drug Fox's head to heads right now. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's one on Axe. He's one on Shoot at. He's one on Bladewise. Two on Cobalt. One on Connor. Three on Crush. Three two Hugs. O two with H Box. Two two with Ice. One one with Leffen. 
2 0 with Lucky, 0 1 with MACD, 0 1 with Mango, 2 0 with Mike Hayes, 1 0 with Moon, 0 1 with None, 1 0 with Nintendo, 0 1 with Plup, 2 2 with Prof, but one of his losses was with Cheek at a local. 1 0 on Ryan Ford, 2 2 with S2J, 1 0, on, 1 0 with Santi, 3 1 on SFET, 2 0 on Slox, 2 0 on Swedish, 1 1 with Triff, 2 0 on West, 0 4 with Wizzy, 1 0 on Zoo. And what are we saying with for and how does Axe look? Pika? Pika, you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, what what are what are axes? What are axes? Oh let me look. Um pulling it up. Bring out the plover stats. <laughs> plover stats are better. Plover stats are pretty good. They're better. They're better than anything that. Um, Actually, I think they're better than wheat stats because wheat is mean to me. So. Exactly. So axes are 0 1 with Chew, 1 0 on Crush, 0 1 with Drug Fox, 2 1 with Duck, 1 0 on Gatsu, 1 0 on Hugs, 1 0 on Ice, 1 0 on KJH, 0 2 with Leffen, 2 0 on Mango, 1 2 with M2K, 2 0 on Moon, 1 0 on S2J, 2 4 with SFAT, 3 0 with Shroomed, and 0 2 with Swedish. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I trust Drug Fox more because one, he's continuously improving, whereas Axe has kind of been at this level his whole career. And the sec and the second reason I'm gonna I'm gonna say Drug Fox is higher right now is because with a player like Swedish like people like Swedish what and West Balls being big threats to Axe is not good for him being top ten. And he hasn't played West Balls in a while though, so But the last like which is like his over the last year, like Longer term trends. I think he's like 06 with West Balls in like the past, like in 2016 or whatever. Uh, but but the thing is, even saying that, like it's it's not fair of me to claim precedent for why Axe is worse, whereas like, whereas he's been top ten for longer, right? Yeah, but I'd still give Drug Fox the slight edge because I just I just am really impressed by a lot of his records. Axe is really negative on S Fat and Swedish, so. And so. What's our top ten right now, or what's our top nine right now? I should say. Armada. Okay, my. Okay, let me, let me say my. So I got one Armada, two H Box, three Mango, four Mewtwo King, five Leffen, six Plup, seven Wizrobe, eight Chudat, nine Espa. Okay, who do we favor between between Drug Fox and between Drug Fox and Axe? Who do we favor in each head to head, and by how much? Like slight Drug Fox or like major Drug. So Armada, I think, is slight drug box, but it's not. But it's basically irrelevant. Yeah. Hungry box, they both suck. Yeah, I would say like sl- e- even equally shitty. Man- Mango is axe. Um, it, yeah, I would say slight axe. Axe is up two zero on Mango, and Drug Fox just got three zero. What are you saying? Drug Fox beat Mango like, isn't he? Isn't he like one and two in their last three sets? Do you know the last? Do you know when he beat Mango? It was at HTC? That was over a year ago. Yeah. Wow. That was a year. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Access Mango. We haven't seen uh, Drug Fox Mewtwo King yet, but I'm but I'm inclined to. Th- but even though I know Axe has beaten him this year, I'm inclined that lo- through long term trends that Drug Drug Fox would do better than winning twenty five percent of sets. I'm not gonna go with hypotheticals here, and I'm just gonna say Axe. Yeah, I'll give you. All right, I'll give you axe for that. Uh, then we got Leffen. <sighs> mm. Drug Fox's ascent is so soon that I'm still gonna give Axe the slight. Uh, axe is 0-2 against him. Yeah, but Axe was 2-0 last year. I'm thinking about so it. So it has it, it. It has to like even out, you know. He yeah, but Axe got 3-0 both times this year. The thing is, uh, Drug Fox uh, being favorable now, it would be so recency based. But I I have to give it to Drug Fox here, because Drug Fox has a set this year, and Axe is 06 in games with him this year. Yeah, whereas Drug Fox just dominantly 3 0 him. Yeah. Plop, I'll go Drug Fox. I, I think it's definitely Drug Fox for Plop. Or, or, <laughs> which, is, which is funny, because Drug Fox definitely lost his Luigi yeah. 3 0. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but I'm. I still think, like, I cannot imagine Plup Sheik ever losing to Pikachu. Plup beat Axe with Fox, dude. Like, what? Plup could probably beat Axe with Luigi. Probably. 
Um, like, Lizzie, I think it's Axe, Axe Major. Major. Yeah. League. With Chu, I think it's Drug Fox Major League. Um, with Chu, yeah. Yeah, with Chu, it's definitely Drug Fox. With Wizzy, it's Axe. Um, with S Fat, it's definitely, I'll go dr definitely Drug, Drug Fox. Fox. Yeah. So overall, I'd give, I think Drug Fox overall has a better shot against the top nine. Yeah, Drug Fox has a better shot overall, but Axe does slight. The thing is, like, Axe's marginal advantage against the top people, like, that's just Mango. Like, the only one where it really makes that big of a difference is Mango. And against Mute King, we can't say because we haven't seen Drug Fox Mute King. Yeah, I think it's really. I think you definitely could argue either one. Do you want to try from, like, 12 to 20? Just to see. Nah. That? Nah, because Drug Fox is clearly better there. Who is twelve? Who is number twelve right now? Uh, er, Duck. Okay, Duck. I think it's clearly Axe. Axe is yeah. No, no mm. I guess. Dude, Drug Fox lost to Hugs and Daryl. Like, sorry, Daryl and Hugs, but hey, Hugs is good now. Yeah, Hugs. It's it's actually super awesome that Hugs is good now. The scene, I disagree. The scene but... is more fun when he's good. I disagree with that, but... Um, like, Duck, so SJ is Swedish? Swedish is 13, what are you talking about? We said Duck is 12, right? Yeah, Swedish is 13. Yeah, Swedish, I would S go by far Drug Fox. Yeah, SJ, I'd go by far Axe. Axe. I don't think by far, but I'll give it to Axe. Um, Pew Pew, Axe. Axe. <laughs> um, none, Axe. Uh, who's seventeen? Um, Shroomed, Shroomed. That's uh, Drugbox that's Shrugbox. Eighteen is uh, Ice. No, not Ice. Moon. Lucky, Lucky, lucky and Moon. Yeah. Um, I'd go Axe on Moon, and then I'd go Drug Fox first for Lucky. Yeah. And then, and then Ice, I'd go Drug. No, I go Drug Fox, but that's kind of close. I, no, I might go Axe. I go Axe, because there's no Pikachus. They and went really close at Summit, though. They did. Oh, my God. I, when Ice brought out the Sheik, his, I popped off so hard. extremely <laughs> rusty Sheik. Dude, his rusty Sheik almost won yeah. anyway. All right, well, <laughs> actually, you know, I think this is actually kind of different than what we initially envisioned. Yeah, Axe actually is pretty good against 12 to 20. Is it just because we view him as really bad against Swedish. He is really bad against Swedish. Because <laughs> if because if I, we're looking at it's it's Chu S Fat, Chu S Fat and Swedish are the matchups that we by far take Drug Fox in. Every other yeah. one, every other one, you could argue Axe, or like yeah. the ones that you can argue Drug Fox by. It's not it's not by massive margin. Yeah, that's true. I think I think Axe has to stay number ten. If, if, I, I still think you can argue either one. But if but here's the yeah so so I my my gut instinct was actually wrong and based off recency bias. I'm glad we did this right now because it's it's keeping us honed. Yeah, I think you could argue. I think if you put kept Axe at ten, I'd be fine. But I think if you also put Drug Fox at ten, I'd be just as fine. Yeah, if if you re I I think I would see Drug Fox higher, but I don't know if I would. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd see Drug Fox higher definitely. What about? Is S Fat still number? N and we still believe the Hungry Box win keeps S Fat relevant, right? Yes, I was thinking a bit about Drug Fox and Axe versus S Fat, but I can't put him lower because he still has the win on Hungry Box. Yeah, that's that's really valuable. Yeah, but the thing then, is, like, it it's not valuable if you're losing the Cactar and Lucky. I mean, Drug Fox lost to Daryl. Axe lost to Android. S Fat lost to a guy that lost to Young and or S Fat lost to a guy that tied me at a major. So? You tied Sastifer. Yeah, Sastifer's not that good right now. Sastifer's amazing. He's a top twenty player all time. Oh my god. We're not getting into this. Are you at, wait, are you actually gonna argue that he's not? Do you want me to bring up his resume again? I'm not I'm not arguing this. I don't want to argue this. Because you know you're wrong. Sure. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to argue about this later. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. So we, so we went on a bit of a tangent. Or not tangent, but discussion about but, um, Box. So I was thinking, of, yeah, and I think Chudat's very clearly number eight right now. 
And Wizzy's very clearly number seven. Yeah, I mean, Chu had a Chu had an awful major bet. I don't think losing the Shroom and Crush. I think, I think S. I don't, I, terrible. I don't think that's. I don't think that's as bad as losing the Cactuar and Lucky. Yeah, I'm saying S. Fat's bad major kept Shroom above him. I mean, kept you. I think even if S, if S Fed just had like a standard major, I probably would still keep you above him. But it would be more debatable. Why does it feel like Drug Fox is better than Axe right now? Or drug, because why does it feel like he's better than Axe and S Fed? Is it just recency? Honestly, on eye test, I want to put Drug Fox at eight, but <laughs> that's that's what I think too. But I can't. Uh, that's what Sleepy's been arguing for a while. That Drug Fox is number eight. <laughs> yeah, but by results, like it was so by results it. Sleepy was wrong, but dude, dude, right now on eye test, I'm looking at Drug Fox. I'm like, this guy's number eight in the world, but yeah, I can't, I can't what, like. That's what I'm thinking too. I can't like put him there on rankings because results. Yeah, like it, it wouldn't be fair to, it wouldn't be fair to chew S Fat. And... Definitely wouldn't be fair to chew. I'd be upset. Yeah, I, I mean, Drug Fox is amazing. If he sees this, and I mean, he wouldn't give a shit. But if he saw that. People say he's not top ten. Like you know, they're not wrong based on results, but by eye test, it just seems so obvious. Like, yeah, we, isn't he so clearly I'm, top ten? I'm I'm glad he's finally surpassed his peaks with cheek to show that his fox pick was the right one. I agree. Because his peak with cheek was like top fifteen. And look, I know you were the you were one of the doubters. I I didn't never doubt his fox. I just. Liked, I just liked his Sheik more, and I still like his Sheik more, and if he went back to Sheik, I'd be happy. I mean, I think all, I think all of his characters are really good. They are all really good, but his Sheik is the most entertaining to me. Uh, I, I don't agree with that, but, but I think all, all his characters kind of play similarly, in my opinion. I don't know, I just love his Sheik. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, do we have anything to say about Mango 3 or, man or Mango Shroomed? What? Uh, Dude, the best set of the tournament? Uh, Shroomed, you had it. <laughs> Shroomed, I, I think that's the best I've seen Shroomed play. That's what Mango said. Mango said that that was the best he's ever seen Shroomed play. Shroomed didn't drop anything. Like, you could tell Mango was still tilted from the Armada set, but I think he, he just, like, calmed down. Did you see Mango's reaction when he beat Shroomed? He was like, thank God. <laughs> Uh, that was so. That was a really good set. I just that, I, I love that set. This is just a great tournament for Shroom to get back in his. Like he didn't yeah. have any. Like beating Chu is a stellar win for him. Beating Nintendo is a good confidence booster. Three owing Mafia, winning a close set with Moon. I think it it brought like. Like even though even though the the Chu win is probably his best one. That's a really good win. <laughs> Chu's top ten right now. But like, <laughs> also just. By eye test going close with Mango, I think is very good. It's a good return to form for Shroom. And I'm I'm hesitant to call him top fifteen. I don't think he is yet. I, I have him right outside top fifteen. I have him at like seventeen or eighteen right now. Sixteen to eighteen with PPU and none. Oh, for Axe and Axe and Drugbox, we forgot to met. We forgot to mention West Balls. Uh, Axe, oh, I still think Drug it's Drugbox is easy. Well, obviously it's Drugbox, but um, but yeah, overall I'd say. Yeah, Which I think. I, sorry to go back to the drug fox conversation for a second, but this still makes it really complicated because it's like between Chu, S Fat, Swedish, and West Balls, drug fox has, and Chu, yeah, those four. Drug fox has such a big advantage. Oh, don't don't forget the head to head where drug fox wins on X. Oh right, yeah. Uh, that's. I still want to say X because of the because he still does better over across the board. But, but does he really do better across the board? Right, Not by wait, a substantial okay, amount. Okay, you know what? Let's count, okay? I'm not counting. I don't feel like it. No, I, I'm counting right now. So, Axe has Ice, Moon, Nun, QPU, S2J, Duck, Wizzy, M2K, Mango. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Nine matchups that he has the had to, that he has the advantage in. Drug, drugged fox has slight armada, but it's basically negligible. Um, he has Leffen, Twop. I don't even know if I'd give him Leffen honestly. 
even though this year clearly no I, ha I have to give Leffen Axe is 06 in games with him this year yeah. Le Armada Leffen Plup Chu Asphat um, head to head. Yeah, wait, hold on. Swedish, Shroom, Lucky, head to head. So, Drug Fox has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay, so they're like even in the split. That's nine, nine? Yeah. Wow. God damn. It. But Axe is more consistent. But the, here's the thing Axe is more consistent and does better against top level competition. But in the second tier, Drug Fox is way better. Is Axe really, but... really more consistent? I think recently Drug Fox is more consistent. Because Axe lost to Android. Drug Fox has lost to Daryl, Shroom, and Mac. Dar he lost to Daryl. He lost to all those in like January. And for, what about Hugs? Okay, Hugs is pretty bad. Well, but not, but, not like but, bad, but, bad. But, like. but Axe lost to Android. And Android is worse than Hugs. Okay, I'm gonna still I I'm gonna see I'm gonna see Drug Fox higher, but just based on long term trends, I think Axe is a little more grounded. I think it's really close. Yeah, this this looks this looks ridiculously close. You know what? I don't think there's many people in the chat, but if you've been listening this far and you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, why don't you comment on YouTube or comment on Reddit on who you think is better between Drug Fox and Axe? It's a very interesting conversation, I think. Yeah, because the thing is, it's like, at, where Axe has an advantage, like, in terms of criteria, it doesn't seem to be by a lot, but he seems to have more of it. Whereas Drug Fox has, like, a group of players he's better better at dealing with, but it's by a lot. It's by, yeah. It's I think it's ridiculously close. I personally give it to Drug Fox... But if you gave it to Axe, I wouldn't be mad at all. I'm gonna, so. just, because you know how, like, most of the time I'm fairly conservative in player assessment, I tend to view long-term trends. So it's like a very juggle guy type. I mean, obviously... Yeah, it's not, def it's definitely not, juggle guy. It's not specific to juggle guy. He gets it from <laughs> just basic stats. But I'm going to still put Axe at 10 tentatively. But again, like, it's like what we're talking about. Drug Fox is... It just feels inevitable that he'll end up beating another another god and like going back and forth with them, or at least going yeah. back and forth with the Wizzy Chew S Fat. Types. But yeah, I give um, I, I give Dreadlocks the edge. Uh, I wouldn't be mad if you put Axe over him. However, I would be mad if you put S Fat over Chew Dad. Yeah, I wouldn't put S Fat over Chew. I think that even I with the higher peaks, it's still too much inconsistency. Dude, he has too many bad losses. I don't... Like, Chu is just way better. And, of course, like, Wizzy's number seven, like obviously, this, no. Like, this was SFAT's tournament to, like, given that Chu lost, or Chu mm -hmm. lost early, like, this could have been SFAT's tournament to do really well, but instead he loses. And then, S and then SFAT lost even earlier. Yeah. SFAT lost even earlier. <laughs> um, but then, uh, and then I think Wizzy's obviously number seven. It's mainly because he doesn't go to anything to hurt his record, but, like... He has to be number seven. Yeah, and the few things he's gone through, he's been very consistent, in, which makes me think, which makes me think that it, it is indicative of a genuine trend in Wizards. Yeah, game. he's two all on S Fat, one one with Chew, four all on Drugged Fox. If you replaced Wizrobe with Drugged Fox in that set against Leffen, where Leffen was playing really bad, does Wizrobe win? Yes. If you replace Wizrobe in this bracket, if you plus. If you replace Drug Fox in this bracket with a Wizard, how does Wizard do? Who did Drug Fox have? He had Lucky, right? So yeah. he beats Lucky. He beats Lucky free. And then he has, uh. Armada. Ar we'll, rip, we'll rip Wizzy. Um. Then who does he have in Losers? Crush. Crush, okay, um. I'd still, I'd still go Wizzy. I'll go Wizzy, but I wouldn't be surprised at Crush. But I, I'll give it to Wizzy. And then. And then he'd have Nintendo, right? I think he beat Nintendo because it yeah. looks like he's gotten really good at the matchup now. And then Wizzy would play either Hungry Box or Leffen. Like, I guess now Leffen. Yeah, and I th I th yeah, I think Wizzy would probably get the same placing as Drugfox did this tournament. I don't think he'd 3 0 Leffen, but I think he could, like, it's possible that he could beat him. Yeah, I think, man, Wizzy's so good. 
Wait, is he going to more tournaments? What if you had Why'd Wizard? You tr Wait, because actually, here's a, here's a funny way of looking at it. Because we agree that for all intents and purposes, S Fat was not here at this tournament. What if you replaced S Fat at this tournament with Wizzy? Um, who did S Fat have? He had Cactuar. Oh my God, he'd lose to Cactuar. <laughs> Wizzy would lose. No, but if he only loses to Cactuar, if Cactuar goes Marth. Dude, Cactuar will go Marth. What are you talking about? Cactuar's Marth is sick against Fal. It's beaten Wizzy. It's beaten Wizzy multiple times. <laughs> No, that's Dart. That's Dart. Dart's been the one that's beaten Wizzy every time. Okay, wait, let's but, assume Wizzy gets sent to losers. I don't think he loses like, to r 2 d Lou. I don't think he loses to Cool Lime. Uh, I think he beats Lucky. He yeah, gets, then he'd have... He probably beats then Mafia. He'd have, probably he'd destroy Mafia. <laughs> uh, Wizzy versus Shroomed is weird. I, I want to say... I'd favor Wizzy right now. Yeah, right now I want to favor Wizzy, but it wouldn't surprise me if... Streamwise. And then and I think Wizzy would beat Moon. Yeah. And then I think he would play Mango, right? And yeah. Lose. So fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth, I think. Yeah. That's... Or ninth. Or ninth, he could lose to Crush. But the fact, but the thing is, losing to Crush for ninth is better than, say, losing to Lucky for seventeenth or Cactuar that early. Dude, I. Man, I don't want to see Cactuar versus Wizzy, because I feel like Cactuar would just embarrass him and just ruin everything. <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. Assuming he beat Cactuar and then took beat Mike Hayes, which I think is fair, he would have had to play Mango. He would probably lose that. Then play Nintendo, which he'd probably win. Play Drug Fox, which he would be very favored, or pretty solidly favored. And then, he, and then he'd have left end, so... I think fourth or fifth is probably a solid guess for where he would be. Yeah, it's a... It says a lot about his improvement. God, just uh, enter more with you. You're really annoying. I the best like at you. north. The best at northwest is saying that Palika is about to beat Artie. Oh my! Wait, no way! Let's go! Oh my God, Palika! Palika taking a game, taking a set off Artie. Pog Chan, good shit, Yukon. Anyways, uh, I, I'll have to watch that in a bit. You know, we haven't we haven't talked about Mango this tournament. I mean, what is there to say? He he just played very smart. He played very smart against Drug Fox in particular. His Falco just like his Falco looked great on day one and day two. Just kind of I don't the the way uh, he talked about it on stream is that he doesn't think he can do Fox all three days. It's just too exhausting and it requires yeah. a certain kind of discipline and play from him that he doesn't really like playing. But he just, he just knows he has to play it, do it to do what he needs to do to win. And, what, and combine that with what he wants to do. Um, so, his Falco just does a really good job, like, easing him and, and getting him comfortable. I think on day three, he just needed it for Drug Fox. That was it. Mm -hmm. And it looked great. Against against Hbox, I, I have to give Taffo a lot of credit. I, Taffo's talked before, like, both with, both with us about this and also just, like, on his own stream publicly about how he thinks Puff is really limited and how he thinks there'll be a point where Hbox like can't do anything but take really risky guesses that he has to, he has to be right on or lose. And I just think Mango has such a has looked like he's had such a strong grip on Hbox. I don't think it means that like he'll he'll take a massive winning streak against Hbox like he did from twenty thirteen to twenty fifteen ish or so. You mean from two thousand nine to twenty fifteen? Like he still, I mean, even then he still <laughs> lost him. But I, like I, but I, like it wouldn't surprise me if Hbox beat Mango in their next set. But I think Mango is definitely a strong favorite because it looks like he's really refined his way of looking at Puff. Like I learned, yeah. uh, I learned how Mango has like four different timings for the up throw up air that he uses to throw off Hbox. I think every fox has something. Every top fox has something like that. Mango, I, I don't know, dude. His he just looks so strong against H H Box and Losers Finals, but at the same time, and we glossed over Winners Finals. But H Box also, to his credit, looked very t like visibly defeated after losing to Armada and such. Dominated. He got destroyed by Armada. Holy crap! We were ta we talked about last week. I think how H Box was like ready to go into quote unquote championship mode, where he was just really preparing for Armada. And I think to have all his preparation kind of, like, just get thrown back in his face, uh, it, yeah. it was probably dejecting for him. Now, this is not to take away anything from Mango, who played incredible 
and just looked great against Jigglypuff and looked great from loser's bracket to winning the tournament. But uh, I think it's something that has to be taken into account, to be fair to HBox. And now we got to talk about Grand Finals. Um, this is probably, I mean, pretty clearly an all-time classic. It's Mango Armada, both sets. I forgot how good Mango Armada sets were until this tournament. I forgot how much I was missing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mango tried out the Marth first set. I think it's more sort of just like... Again, it's what we were talking about earlier, like having the discipline to... Having the discipline to play Fox for a really long time can be draining. I think he played Marth to give himself a break, break kind of get himself like a, even more acquainted with dash dancing a little more and sort of like zoning out and sort of Sort of like taking a backseat for, for a game on FD and conserving his energy, you know? Mm-hmm. Granted, so where would, you, where would you rank this in Grand Finals for this year? Uh, I think it's the best one. I think the second set is the best one. Uh, I like the first set more. Is it because he pulled out Marth on FD? No, it was because it was way closer. The, the second set was still really close. It was Game 5. Yeah, but Game 5, Mango pooped on him. Game, game five of the first set, Armada almost won. Oh, uh, Arma- no, Armada didn't almost win. He did win. He and got he too did something. He he did something that I've never seen Armada do ever in my life. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever seen Armada, or one of the few times to see Armada very worried or nervous. And, like, wanted that's it. literally the only time I've ever seen Armada overextend in my life. And it didn't pay off. <laughs> if that fair hit, the attorney was over. Uh, I... I just don't think there's much to talk about with the set. It's just incredible melee. Two world class players who are the they they are the two best players of all time, and seeing yeah. them playing each other is just always a pleasure. Yeah, they're the good sets. So now we got to talk about where it places in all time top eights, right? Uh, yeah, we we can talk. We can get to that in a little bit. But just one last side note about Mango is this gives him his twenty first title. And it gives him yep. a nat- and w- we can talk about this a little bit later as the year goes by, but for people listening that are already familiar with, with sort of how we track tournament results and look at Smash history, we tend to look at different tournaments as titles, and titles, say, typically, save for a few exceptions, have three or more gods attend, three or more gods attending, or they have three or more top five players in attendance, so... Mm-hmm. This was Mango's. This was Mango's twenty-first title, if I'm not mistaken, and because yeah, which extends his lead of as number one even farther. So, for reference, Mango has twenty-one titles. Armada has eighteen, but Armada leads in championships, which are tournaments. Dude, against. Armada has. When I was counting them, I was like, "Holy crap!" Save, Armada has so many. <laughs> yeah, save for a few exceptions, championships, champs, championships are tournaments where all top five. Players are in attendance. He has so ten. Armada he has, has ten. ten of them. That's more than half of his win. Mango currently has seven. Uh, and for overall titles, which are tournaments with three or more top five players in attendance, again, save for exceptions like Jack Arden tournament and most three and most three and things like that. Um, Mango has twenty one titles. Armada has eighteen. So Mango is still in the lead for titles one, but again, like. That doesn't take into account how Mango is able to attend more title tournaments due to being in the United States, whereas Armada was, still has the lead in championships by a pretty so I was, solid margin. I was looking at it, and I was looking at all their records throughout tournaments, and I was like, out of everybody, Mango actually seems the most balanced out of everybody based on the tiers of tournaments, because he has second place for most in every single one. I think it's because he attends so much, too. Yeah, but it's like... Mewtwo King's very heavy on Super Majors. Armada's very heavy on Championships. Ken's very heavy on Nationals. Oh, one thing I, I don't think we included in the... For when keeping track of... Oh, no, we we found, we had HTC Throwdown. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had HTC. HTC. When you were originally counting Mango's titles, you forgot KOC4. I added it. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's a good pickup. Yeah. So, looking at Mango Armada's legacy... I still, I still am very hesitant to say that Armada isn't a clear cut number one right now, just because it's, of how it's so st- ridiculous. How I don't st- even think Mango's close. I'll because, be honest. It's because of how strong he started the year, and the fact that ma- the title disparity between the two can easily be explained by how Mango has 
way he lives in a region where he can attend more. Whereas Armada so, um, isn't like that. So I was looking at this. So you know how I have like my championship title list, which goes how long you go without losing a set. Yeah. And everything. So I was looking at it, and Armada's end of end of 2016 to 2017 reign was 155 days, and it is the and when I was looking at it, it's probably the most impressive ever. Like I, think I, I was it's looking, more impressive than anything Ken has done. I was looking at it, and I was like, I was looking at it, and I think it's a little better than 05 Ken when I was reviewing everything. I, th I think it's the best run ever. The thing that does it for me with, with Armada versus 05 Ken, even late 2015 Armada, is that he had every single one of the t top players try to beat him. He beat all of them. He beat Leffen. He beat HBox. He beat even Mango. And he whooped Mango in Genesis Grand Finals this year. And he beat... He overcame Mute Or not overcame because he's the favorite, but he like came back against Mute King. The thing is, when, when you look at most of these consecutive god wins and things like that, they're usually not so balanced and over such a long period of time. It's usually like, oh, you know, he had one... He, this person had one win against someone that usually beats them or gives them trouble, and they beat people who they're expected to beat. With Armada, he's expected to beat every single person in the world. So, so um, I don't think late 2015 Armada is more impressive than 05 Ken, but I do think late 2016 Armada is. I think when else? you take into account the tournament victories also, and not even just consecutive set wins, it's by far Armada. Right, yeah, tw late 2016 Romano is just ridiculous. He won like four championships in a row. Because it's, it's the championships, it's the nationals that he won in a row. So like, so forget sets for a moment. Let's look at just tournaments. After losing Big House 6, he won what? Canada Cup? He won Summit 3. He won UBC. Yeah. He won G4. He, or actually, I have it right here. So after getting second at the Big House 6, Armada won Canada Cup. That's one. Smash Summit 3, 2. Dreamhack Winner, 3. UGC Smash Open, 4. Genesis 4, 5. Smash Summit Spring 2017, 6. Um, yeah, that's 6. That's 6 titles? Is that the longest ever? Longest streak ever? Nah, Ken might have a longer like title streak. But, like, I'm, our, our mod is more impressive. By far, I think. I don't know about by far... But I do give late 2016 Armada the slight edge over 05 Ken. And he's not done yet. I don't think he's done yet. The thing is, like, even when there's periods where Armada lose, like, Ken at least went into loser's bracket a good amount before winning the tournament. And the other the other thing with Ken is that, like, again, he, he still got mostly matchups that he was, or that's not fair to say. I was going to say that. Mostly like, matches that he's favored in because he was favored against everybody. Yeah, I, I realize that applies. <laughs> I realize that applies to him also. But I just find this half a year stretch from Armada more impressive than anything. Even like Mango's reign from pound three to pound four, I don't think is this impressive because there were there were still majors, but the but not anywhere as frequent in terms of like championships and national level events. Yeah. So I have these, and I have. So basically, late 2016, Armada's reign is encapsulated by UGC to now. It was 155 days, and then I have Ken's 05, which was MLG Atlanta 05 to New York Opener 2006. That was 147 days. So they're really close, but Armada's is a little longer. That's that's what I just fig that's what I figured out when I was doing it, and then I looked through all the data and I decided that Armada's is a little better. And it's also the fact that Armada just. It is so hard to send Armada to the loser's bracket, you know? Yeah. And if it's you're so not hard. a god, it's impossible. Not if you're Minji. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Like, or dude, Lordy. What percent chance do you think Plup has against Armada next turn? Zero. Zero. <laughs> would, you take, would you take 20 to 1 odds on Plup? Or would you still yes. bet on Armada? I would take I would take twenty to one odds for Armada. <laughs> I honestly don't I honestly don't think I would take twenty to one odds for Plop. I still think Armada would win. I agree. Or no, that's that's a little ridiculous. I, nah, think, I would go, I would go with it. I think I would give Plop like fifteen to one odds. What about um what about Armada versus like Chew? 
No, Chu has Chu has like Would you take a hundred would you t would you take a hundred to one odds? I need to see a set with Ch Ch Chu's Jigglypuff first. I would take a hundred to one odds. I have to see it first, but but my gut instinct says yes, I would. I would take those odds and bet on Armada yeah, anyway. Because Chu, uh, Chu's like, man, I gotta think about this. I think it's so weird that Chu does better against Armada than a lot of other people do. <laughs> uh, yeah, Armada, uh, he's the best player of all time. And Royal well, Flush is great for Mango. If Mango keeps winning nationals, maybe he can turn the tide and no, claim his status. No. He's going to need a year of dominance. <laughs> I'm saying if Mango wins like three more championships this year or something, maybe. But If, Ar if Armada's like, no if Mango's number one this year, which I don't think is possible, then maybe. Also, by the way, Palika already is in game five. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Um, I know it's in chat. Yeah, but yeah. All right, uh, let me see what, what else we had to talk about. We had the top eight, top eights. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Do you want to talk about your top eight, top eights right now? Yeah, sure. So number one is Apex 2015. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can you can give like a slight explanation for it, for it all. Right, well, well, yeah, well, yeah. Spoilers. Number one is Apex 2015 because um, it what gets added to it is that was also the last tournament that had every single one of the big six at it. That's one thing that adds to it. I agree. An another thing was. It just had every set was so good. I except like Armada Mango, weirdly enough. Like every set was so good. Like we had uh we had PP Armada winner semis, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. We had Left and Mango winner semis, which was great. We had Amsa KK. Did Left and win three one? Yeah, he did. He won the one thousand dollar money match. But it but it was really like it was a four game set, but I'm pretty sure it was close, wasn't it? It was a. Uh, well, it was like Leffen was kind of dominating, and then Mango started coming back, and then Leffen got that ridiculous up tilt mm -hmm. that killed super early. Remember? <laughs> and then um, Amsa KK was really good. Um, Hbox Shroomed was amazing. Um, Hbox Armada was decent. That was like the first time Armada ever beat him with Fox, so that's a notable set. Amsa Mango was ridiculous. Holy crap. Um, Mango Armada was meh. PP Leffen was so good. I think oh, that's it. That PP Leffen's in my top three sets ever. PP Leffen, even Armada versus PP in set one of Grand Finals is is a fantastic set. Dude, yeah, and Losers Finals was good. Like the whole story around Apex 2015, it was like stopping Leffen, kind of. If you just follow it, because it's like Leffen's just like tearing through everybody. He finally beat all five gods. He beat um, a hyped up Mango. He was in Winners Finals, and he lost to PP. Yeah, out of all the people. Dude, that was so good. I think I think PP PP winning Apex 2015 and sort of also the other thing you have to consider that makes that top eight so special in my heart is that even if like not every set was a super nail biter, but the peaks were I think at the time the top level players looked so much better than everyone else. Like and it was like watching watching Armada versus PP, people were like. Oh my God! This is the this is the future of melee. It's going to be like counter picking, and you need secondaries, and they look so clean and so much more polished, and and also what you're saying about like Leffen's rise to godhood, like he finally beat like we can't rely on Music King for an easy win against Leffen. Like he is legit. I mean, Music King was definitely vomiting blood that tournament. Yeah, but, but oh, whatever. There, there's also another really big thing you have to keep in mind: just the entire disaster that was Apex 2015, like. Having to move venues, dude. It's like ridiculous. Apex twenty Apex twenty fifteen was a terrible tournament. Yeah, yeah, running, but the game, but the gameplay was so good. Don't don't forget, it also ran extremely late. Like Listen, I watched I was, it because I, 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 I was at the there. Super, I was at the Super Bowl at, at the night. I was I was at the Super Bowl and celebrating afterwards, and it was midnight West Coast time, and I was or like some something like that, and I was watching Left and PP after after while celebrating the Super Bowl win. Like, dude, um. Apex 2015 and PPMD were both trending over the Super Bowl at one point. <laughs> no, the the top eight is fantastic. Uh, that that night is one of the most fun nights in my life. Like going to the Super Bowl, seeing the Pats like win a great one, and then coming back home and seeing seeing PPMD out of all players 
Like, having just taken I, a break from Nationals coming to win. I had PP getting 7th or 5th at that tournament. PP, and he got... PP winning that... Dude, PP winning you know what also makes it really sad? Is that that is PP's first championship win and probably his last championship win. The fact that PP won that tournament after taking such a hiatus for... Or national hiatus, at least. Along with the event just being a complete disaster and, like us not even knowing if we'd be in a position to watch top eight and it running so late like it adds that like people who are new to the scene or i guess like if you if you were around by apex 2015 that doesn't mean you were around that long but if you haven't seen it and you're wondering why we both of us view it so highly it's because it it's just like there's so many apex 2015 is one of the most important tournaments because it showed that as as a community like we weren't going to tolerate shitty events like Apex, like running late anymore, and that we could, but we, but also that we could, sort of like, we could, we could deal with it and be like, okay, like we could persevere and we can make sure this doesn't happen again. And have a backup plan. Dude, I don't understand. Is like the terrible running of Apex tournament just make everybody play super well? Because I feel like every Apex top eight's always been really good. <laughs> I just think that the combination of storylines, gameplay, and importance to the scene, and just yeah, like, let's 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 also not forget about this was KK's first top eight in a while. Amsa got fifth. Shroom to beat Mewtwo King for the second time ever, and almost beat Hbox for the first time ever. Um, and Armada beat Russian, H That's a, that's a great. That's actually a very good way of putting it. Like, that's a and, Ar and then Armada way. beat Hbox with Fox for the first time. Um, Armada showed that his fox can beat Mango's Falco. Um, PP came back. That's all that matters. Dude. I think that there's like something special about that, that it's the last tournament with all six gods. And I don't I think it'll be it's... ever like... I don't think we'll ever see anything. So we won't ever... The reason why it's number one in my top eight list too... Well, I don't have one, but the reason why it's my favorite is because just... Again, like I said before, the combination of storylines and the combination of like great gameplay. But I just I don't think we'll ever see something like all six gods at a tournament again, combined with yeah, all the it, combined it with feel the same. What a, combined with what a test Apex twenty fifteen was for the melee and, and obviously the Smash community as a whole. Yeah. Just my yeah. opinion though. Dude, and that is like PB's last good tournament. <sighs> Alright, what's your what's your number two then? I thought you were gonna go backwards from eight to one. Nah, man. I ha nah. I wanted to talk about Apex Twenty Fifteen immediately. <laughs> okay, what's your two? Um, but like number two, uh, it's really close. I I think Anaheim Twenty Fourteen's up there. I think that might be my number two. Uh, Las Vegas Two Thousand Six is really good. Anaheim Twenty Fourteen. West Balls threw a set against uh, Leffen. He was very I upset think, about it. Was that for seventh or was that for ninth? Seventh, I think. Because Hacks, uh, no, no, because Hacks was for ninth, you're right. Oh, Axe beat Hungrybox at MLG 2014, don't forget. That's the only time he's ever been Hungrybox, yeah. And then Mewtwo King's run was really good. He overcame PP. Yeah, PP Leffen was a good set. Um, not the one where Leffen won, the one where PP yeah. won. Oh, Mewtwo King busted out the Falcon. Yeah, against P and it actually did pretty well against PP. I think it it took, a, I don't remember if it was the pool set or the bracket set, but Mewtwo King definitely took one game with he Falcon. Won. No, no, he didn't take a game, but he got really close. Dude, the, f the first combo, if it wasn't a reverse knee... So, oh, do you want to hear a funny sickest... story about that set? What? So, Mewtwo King won... He three-stocked PP's Falco the first game on Battlefield. Like, looking great. And usually, at this point, PP just, like, ran over Mewtwo King. But, uh... Yeah. This time, when, when PP counterpicked FD... Uh, like, having... PP counterpicked FD after losing the first game, right? So, yeah. of course, this is to try to bait Mewtwo King to a Marth Ditto. But Mewtwo King starts, like, goading PP, PP, and he's like, I'm going to go Falcon. I'm going to go Falcon, and you're going to go Marth. And PP was like, dude, don't go Falcon. If you go Falcon, I'll go, I'll, we'll just play Falco Falcon, and it won't, it won't be fun at all. And PP, and Mewtwo King was like, no, 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 just, just play Marth against my Falcon. And PP was like, fine, whatever. Because, because that's the, because the reason PP picked FD was to try to Marth Ditto him. Dude, that's so that's so Mewtwo King. <laughs> and then Mewtwo King ended up losing game two anyways, but PP just stuck with Marth for the rest of the set because his Falco got three stock to start the set. PP is the only person that I would trust him counterpicking FD against Mewtwo King. He's the only person I don't think that's crazy. 
Plop? Yeah? Plop can do it. Plop on FD? Yeah, he's beating him on muting on FD. So no, much. but that's just she that's a chic ditto. Dittos are like weird. I mean, you said he's the only. Okay, let's clarify. Do you mean spaces? Yeah. Uh, Mango wouldn't counterpick FD, but like when Mango wins on FD, it's not that much of a surprise. I think it's a surprise. Not not if you look at how they play against each other, it's not that. Like Music King's favorite, but like, but it's not by that much. I, well, let me say this: if what I mean is that if PP counterpicked FD, he's the only person I wouldn't look at him weird at. What about West Balls? If he if West Balls sucked it up and if, counterpicked FD, if West Balls counterpicked FD against Music King, I would laugh. He's beaten them. Up. He's beaten him on it. Yeah, once in 2014. He like two stocked him on it. Yeah, then he lost the next game on it, and then lost the set because he'll never beat Mewtwo King. There's a song about it. Oh, uh, what if Leffen counterpicked Mewtwo King? The... I would think he's crazy. He, you he... should never. I I don't. I think if you're a spacey, you should never counterpick Mewtwo King FD because there's a slight chance that he four stocks you. What about S Fat? No, don't do it. S Fat's an idiot. <laughs> Dude, remember when I called then the S Fat Moon said S Fat was gonna counterpick Moon to FD game five? Did he count did he counterpick him to FD? Yeah and he won. I hate S Fat. S Fat's so stupid. Oh my god. So mean. S Fat's a nice guy. Dude. Dude he is a nice guy, which is why he's better than Crush. Oh my god. I can't wait for Crush to beat me today. Crush will never beat Music King. That will never happen. Do you want to? Okay. Do you want to say that like again? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. If oh wait, hold on. Let me see if anyone's watching this right now. Hold on. Oh my god. Why? Why yeah. you? Why? I don't get it. I'm gonna have this for reference just in case one day he beats Music King. Okay. Crush will never beat Music King. Okay. I I didn't clip it because I I don't want to be mean. But I'm serious. Crush will never beat Music King. You don't think he'll? ever do it. No, I think Mewtwo King will retire before Crush beats him. That's actually a pretty safe bet by you, but I believe in Crush. I also think Mewtwo King will retire before West Balls beats him. Oh my god. Okay, that's ridiculous. Okay, how many years has West Balls been fighting Mewtwo King? They've played, like, what? Five sets? Total five sets? Are you serious? Do you want to count? They've played they play way more than five. Like nine? Like ten, eleven, twelve? I'm, I'm thinking since 2014 how many times they've played. They've played a lot, and Mewtwo King has won every time. Their uh, Do You Fox with it set was pretty close. I remember, I remember at What The Fox won, we were thinking that if West Balls beat Mewtwo King at that tournament, he would be number six or number five or something. Wait, I just uh, realized who sent. So Silent Wolf beat Mewtwo King at at D Fox with it. Who? Fiction. Oh, okay. Fiction eliminated him or sent him to losers? I forget. Fiction, Fiction eliminated him. Silent Wolf beat him two one. Then Mewtwo King barely beat West Balls, and then Fiction two out him. Dude, Fiction is such a legend. I, have we ever seen Fiction on D Fox? Let me look. Let me look it up. Because we've seen Fiction Mewtwo King, we've seen Fiction beat Mango. Yeah. Yes, it happened. Oh yeah, it happened at Apex 2014 for seventh. Oh yeah. Okay, never mind. No, that was Fiction Cobalt. Nope, Hungrybox Fiction right here. Oh yeah, because Leffen beat Hungrybox in quarters. Yeah, and it was soft. Uh, something. Okay. Hold it, on. Was, it was soft. It was soft Cobalt. It was soft double eliminated Ice. Oh my god, Soft almost beat Cobalt that tournament, too. Wait, okay, so your number two and three are... MLG Anaheim and MLG Las Vegas 2006. The grand finals in MLG... I think that, I, if I'm not mistaken, the best set of the tournament is grand final set when, when KDJ resets it. Yeah, that was that was a really good set. Um, I remember because he reset the bracket on PC's Falco, and then PC won Fox set two and one. Yeah, they foxed it over for the rest of the tournament, or did like Fox versus KDJ oh, Mark, right? I actually don't think that's the set of the tournament. I think set of the tournament is um, KDJ Ken winner. Oh yeah, K yeah, of course. How, how, the, the original set in Florida. 
Dude, that was like game five, super last hit, and then Randall screwed Ken over. <laughs> yeah, how, how could I forget KDJ Ken? People are like pointing to that as the ape, like peak of melee and stuff. Yeah, and then PC, Chris, KDJ, both, all three sets were really good. Um, Isaiah Chu was fun to watch just because Isaiah freaking destroyed him. That's the only time he's ever beaten Chu. Yeah, I was going to say Chu usually beat him outside of that. But the funny story about that is that Isaiah posted in the thread for the tournament, I'm going to beat Daniel this tournament. And then he just destroyed Chu. <laughs> like, That's the that only was, like, person you're okay with beating Chu. You're like, okay, it's cool, Isaiah did it. It's Isaiah. Well, I can't be mad. Listen, I've never heard a crowd so vehemently against Wizzy than I did at Smash Con Losers Finals. That's you so don't understand. Sad, that's funny. <laughs> I've never heard anybody so against Wizrobe in my life. Even Hungrybox was like so against Wizzy that set. Uh, it was ridiculous. Dude, 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 I heard about I heard about that's actually crazy. The fact that even like Hungrybox like who pretty much like overrates Florida. I, I think Florida's amazing, but he like hypes up Florida so much is just rooting against Wizzy. Dude, no you can't root against Isaiah. I've never seen anybody boo Isaiah in my life. I don't think it's possible. I actually think he's more well liked than any melee player. <laughs> Do you think Isaiah was rude I I'm pretty sure Isaiah was pretty rooted against that like Smash for Cash and stuff. Well yeah, for melee. I meant for like sixty four now. I don't yeah, think Yeah, I don't think anyone roots against him. I, like I actually think I will stand by this the chants at Genesis three for Isaiah were louder than the mango chants. I wasn't there, so I can't say. They they were louder than the Mango Chance. Were you at or they were, three? No, but I could just tell they were they were louder and more unanimous than the Mango Chance. It was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. Isaiah is so ridiculously cheered for. I've never heard anybody that cheered for. Not Mango. Not Mewtwo King. He's so unanimously loved. Is he the most loved Smasher right now? Him or Pee Pee. I think it's I think I think it would be PP right now, but PP's been out of the public eye too much for me to like. Like people are. But I feel like if. Like but I feel like if PP comes back, the hype will die down and it'll be Isaiah again. Because I think Isaiah's. I don't, I don't think anybody will ever say anything bad about Isaiah. The thing is, it, it kind of sucks to say this, but people are like, because I'm noticing people like popping up. Like obviously, Reddit is not indicative of like serious smashers, but for an average like spectator who just watches highlights and stuff. I feel like people are forgetting who PP is. It's kind of sad. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some people ask who PP is. And That's it really just makes me depressing, really dude. That's really depressing. It's like, he hasn't been gone that long. Like, people people ask... Or, like, I remember when I got into the scene, like, I still knew who J-Man was and stuff. Like, that was around when he still played. Like, when I got into the scene, I still, like, was following J-Man and Shiz. It's crazy to think. Okay, when when I got into the scene, I'll be honest, I literally had no idea who Court was. <laughs> yeah, it would be like someone not knowing who. I literally had no idea who Court was when I entered the scene. I knew who J-Man was. I didn't know who he I, was either. I, I knew who J-Man was, I knew who Shiz was. I literally had no idea who Court was. I had no idea who Court was, and I had no excuse. I'm, like, we don't have excuses. Tri-State, we should know. We should have known who Court was. Well, well now, now I know who Court is. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now Court's back. Court's back, and he's winning tournaments. He just won his first tournament. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Um, yeah, he... Yeah, yeah. MLG lost... Me. I'm trying to think, are there any other really good... Because, obviously, the set in Florida... Uh, wait, wait, no, no, wait. What am I talking... No, no, Ken versus Green DJ. The set in Florida... I'm such an idiot. That's MLG Orlando. Yeah, idiot. That's but a MLG, lost, MLG Las Vegas Winter Semis is still amazing. Have you ever watched it? Not in a long time. It's really good. Okay, maybe the documentary is making me overrate Las Vegas because that hype package is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. the first thing when you mentioned Las Vegas, the first thing I thought was like, was KDJ resetting the bracket. First thing I th think whenever I hear MLG Las Vegas is, uh, can KDJ win a semis? Followed by Isaiah destroying Chu. Followed by PC winning the tournament. Followed by KDJ's crippling depression. You know, KDJ won MLG Long Island, right? Dude, dude, when, dude, when KDJ lost MLG Las Vegas, did you hear him in the documentary? He, like, didn't sleep for, like, four days. He was really sad. Yeah. It was, like, Game 5, Grand Final set, too. It was on Corneria. That's so stupid. 
dude, um, there was this one combo PC did with Falco and Grand Final Set One that I think is still impressive to this day. It was like it was a bunch of dares, and it was so ridiculous. It was on Fountain. Right. But yeah, like I'm thinking of other top eights that are really good. Um, I think Genesis Three top eight is extremely overhyped. Um, Genesis yeah. One top eight. Really I think good. that I think the Mango sets are great in Genesis Three top eight, but not the. I, dude, when people said Genesis Three top eight was better than Apex 2015 top eight, I was like, no, less than half of the sets were good. The only really good ones were the Mango ones. Not really. Mango Nintendo wasn't good. Mango PP wasn't good. Mango Axe wasn't good. But they were all. But they were all like entertaining. That doesn't make them good. S Fat Ice was good. S Fat Axe was good. And then... First Mango Armada was pretty good. Yeah, first Mango Armada. And then Hungry Box Mango was probably set at the tournament. Um, like, I'm thinking of the other tournament. What was, Hungry winners, Box. what was Winner's Finals? Hungry Box Winner's, Sem what, Winner's Semis was Hungry Box Axe and Armada PP. Oh, Armada PP was good. Yeah. Uh, but then Armada, Armada H Box was okay. Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned Genesis 3 Top 8, wasn't that... It's just the Mango Armada thing that kind yeah, of carries pe it. Yeah, people overhype it way too much. It's not that good. Genesis 1 Top 8 is amazing. Yeah, of course. Genesis Wait, okay, 1 Top so 8... Is that your number 4? Genesis 1 Top 8? Yeah. If Genesis 1 Top 8 had the shiz sets in it, it'd be my number 1. But shiz got ninth, so... Do you want to know what a... Want to know what Top 8 would have been great? If what? it weren't for the fact that we saw Mewtwo, it weren't if it weren't for Todd, Todd going Mewtwo first two games and winners finals and making it really boring, I think Genesis two top eight would have been fantastic. Or Genesis like, two top eight's probably up there for me, just top. because Mango Taj. The winners won. The yeah. winners won. No, both. Are, but the thing is, both are really entertaining for different. Both are entertaining and grand finals is great. I hate the losers, Mango Taj, so much. Losers, Mango Taj, and winners, Mango Taj are both really good and entertaining. The winners, Mango, winners, Mango Taj is my favorite set of all time. The worst, losers, the, Mango the worst set of the tournament is by far the the winners finals one though. Mm, yeah, yeah, it was pretty boring. Just because the the wow. stupid Mewtwo pick, and then like the when he tried Marth, he got stitch faced and super yeah, tilted. Like Oh, that was, dude. He was actually looking really good in game three. He could have won that game. <laughs> and then Stitch Face took like two of his stocks. Uh, and then he just, I like, can't think what else in Genesis talk. Uh, there was oh, Ar PP there was Armada H box. PP Did, Armada. What? Armada H box is like even though it's thought it was thought of as cringy at the time in retrospect. In retrospect, the timeout was actually pretty dope. Dude, game one of Armada H box of that set is amazing. It's super hype. And then there's, um, there was, yeah, there was Mango Taj. And then Losers, there was, there was PP Shroom. Shroom beating PP is good. Uh, there was Mewtwo King S2J. That set was really good. I, I don't remember it. It was, it was super close. It was like, it was 3 1, every game was last hit. Um, um Mewtwo King H, Mewtwo King H. Mewtwo King H Box was really good. It was game five. Wait, it was good. I thought didn't I thought H Box like three would him. No, it was game five. Okay. Well, the last game was on Congo Jungle. I remember. All right. And then there was Mango Shroomed, which was Shroomed actually did surprisingly well. Shroomed almost won every single game. <laughs> Is that in the Mang five? <sighs> you know, Mang Mango Taj is amazing, but then Mango Taj ruins it for me. <laughs> If you but, know what I mean. But Mango Armada went, or Grand Finals was pretty good. It no, was pretty good. If it, if, no it was amazing. It, but it's like great rushdown Fox. Yeah. But like back to Genesis 1 Top 8, I didn't even get to talk about it. There was H-Box Dark Rain, which was really good. There was... Um, what else was for 7th? I'm trying to remember. It was Hacks versus... The guy who beat Raceland. Who beat Race no. for ninth? Oh my god, who beat Race for ninth? Oh my god, who else got... Oh, it was Hax... Wait, I'm trying to... Wait, let me look at it. So Hax... No, no, Scar... Scar... It was Mango Scar in Winter Semis. Because people were like, what is Scar doing in Winter Semis of this tournament? Yeah, and then it was um, Armada Mewtwo King. And which, um... I, th I forgot who said it. I think it might have been YCZ. 
that our modern music king was the best set of all time for like an hour. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. I'm trying to remember who beat Hacks. Was it Mewtwo King? No way. No, because Mewtwo King was a winner. Was it Zoo? It was Zoo. It was Zoo Hacks. Yeah, but their sets were usually pretty ugly. Yeah, but Dark Rain Hbox was really good. Um, there was Mewtwo King Armada, which was amazing. There was Mango Scar, which was really bad. <laughs> and then the Mango, all three Mango, or the first two Mango Armada. Honestly, all three. No, the third one is the third one's the third one. I think is kind of sucks. No, but no, but the third one adds to the story. I guess. Um, Hbox Zoo, Mewtwo King yeah, Zoo. Oh, Hbox Zoo and Mewtwo King Zoo are great sets. Yeah, Mango Hbox is kind of meh. But overall, I think there's a lot of really good sets in there. I think Genesis One Top Eight. And I think Genesis One Top Eight is a little overrated, but but the Grand Final. No, I, I I I actually can't say it's overrated because they're at because Mango Armada and Zoo H Box and Zoo Mute King are just and Armada Mute King are just too good. I but think like as I said, a whole, it's I think it has really high moments, but as a whole, it's not that. But if I was allowed to just take the shiz sets and just put them in top eight, it would be like my number one because like every shiz set is so good. I, I think it's I think it's more. Or. I think, like, the importance of the technology, sort of, like, how they got uploaded onto YouTube and everything, and how, like, they became such, like, notable sets because of, or tournament, like, sets because of Mango Armada at the tournament is what makes it more, uh, more memorable, because at that point, like, like, yeah, we I mean, had ROM, and we had ROM in the MLG videos and Pound 3 and stuff, but Genesis is, like, such a mainstay on Waffle's channel. Like, that, that shit keeps Melee alive. I think that's what yeah. makes it, like, more notable. But, I mean, there were still some really good sets. Yeah, obviously. But I, but I think there it was, gets um, talked about a little much for great top eights overall. Honestly, I think the Shiz sets are better than most of the sets in top eight. Because Shiz Dark was amazing. Shiz Zoo was amazing. Armada Shiz was amazing. Shiz H box was amazing. Why couldn't sh why couldn't those sets just be in top eight? They were so good. Dude, I'm still I'm still okay. We'll go on to the next part. You have to have the Big House Four in your top eight top eights. Yeah, Big House Four is probably my number five. Yeah, I was gonna say because every set, because the storyline, every great set. If if Mute King won, it'd be above Genesis one. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, Mango Lucky is amazing in that tournament. Lucky West Balls is really good. Hacks Armada is actually pretty damn good. Um, Hacks Kells was pretty bad. Even uh, Mewtwo, even Mewtwo King Mango's three, even the three O was really good. Yeah. And then what was the other winner semis? Was it? It was Left and Armada, right? Yeah. That was an amazing set. And then Left and Mewtwo King was really good. It was a three L, but there were so many highlights. Yo. Drop zone. Yeah, I'll never yeah, that's one that. of my favorite when he <laughs> drops zone down air and taunts him. It's Dude, so he cool. just did. He did like four throw down air off the side platform yeah, and of just Man. immediately taunted. <laughs> I've never seen that. And then he did like the. Do you remember he did like a, the back throw to like reverse up B immediately? There are like so many little inputs in that one sequence. It's crazy. Dude, our music actually also, out of his mind. But, but don't forget, there's the oh, and Leffen is a sneaky snake. When, when, Dude. when Leffen zero to death him, but Mute King zero to death him right back. Dude, that was... Yeah. Oh my god, there were so many good commentary moments in that. And then there was Mango Leffen, of course. Mango Arm Well, Mango Armada actually wasn't that good. Um, Mango kind of pooped on him. Yeah. There, But Mango Leffen was amazing. You know Armada was super drunk in his Big House 4 interview? Yes, I know. It's it's kind of funny rewatching it knowing that. Because at the time, when I saw it live, I didn't know... But you can't just force stack me, Mango. You can't just force stack me. That's another. That's another good set. Ending. Dude, Scar Scar's commentary that turn it was actually yeah, Scar on fire. Yeah, were phenomenal at the Big House Four. Um, yeah, then there was, then um, I'm thinking Apex 2014's top eight. Yeah, the the four PP's four stock on me. He's two four stocks in me to King. The first I'm one where he destroys him. He just or he makes him rage quit FD. But the second one, when he begins grand finals with the four stock, where he just annihilates, he annihilates Mewtwo King on a, on Fountain. Why you gotta talk about Mewtwo King getting destroyed? I'm right here. Um, but yeah, I was more talking about Mango PP, Mewtwo King Leffen, 
uh, Mango Leffen, Soft Cobol, uh, Hbox Mang, no, no, none of the H, not Hbox Mango. Um, Mango, yeah, Mango Leffen, PP Mango, Mute King Leffen. Uh, Mango Mute King was good. Yeah, the real Mango Leffen's amazing. For a big house that, four. No, for Apex. Oh, Apex 2014, yeah. That's a pretty good remember, top eight also. Even even remember, like PP, the second set of Grand Finals was pretty, or the first set of or Grand Finals was pretty good. Grand Finals was pretty good. Mute King had some pretty nice moments in game four. Yeah, one of my favorite lost. combos is when he, he does like the up airs across Pokemon, and he does the he does the jabs, and then he upbees them off stage, but you see Mute King like get up because he's hyping himself up. And yeah, then, then he, he lost. Yeah, he lost anyway, but... I'm, tr I'm trying to remember one of the zeniths is in my is in my top eight. I forget if it's 2013 or 2012. I'm trying to remember because Zenith actually had a really good top eight. One of them. Zenith 2012 was it? Um, or Zenith 2013? I I don't remember if it was that one or not. Zenith 2012 is the one where PP pops off. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, I'm think I'm thinking about it because there was a uh, yeah there was. Xena 2013 had Mango winning. Oh, it had Hbox four stocking Mango, but then losing the set. I thought Xena uh, 2012 because it was Xena 2012 was a bunch. It was Mewtwo and PP. All three sets were really good. Um, Chew that. Chew that hungry box. Chew that Mewtwo King. You know nobody ever talks about PP Chew. Because PP bodied him. PP destroyed. That's a dude. I was looking at I was looking at Xena twenty thirteen just now, um, and I was looking at I remembered PP shiz at this tournament. It was so good. I mean, PP won like two zero, didn't he? Yeah, but do you remember game one? <laughs> like barely. Game one, it was last hit, and shiz was winning. And what happened was there was like this crazy last hit exchange. And then eventually they were like both standing on opposite sides of fountain, and then Shiz just like he like walked up to him. He did a standing laser and then side beat off stage. <laughs> it was Wait, the funniest thing. <laughs> that sounds really familiar. I think I think I know what you're talking about. It was also the only time Mango and Shiz have played in tournament. Okay, I actually think I have to like go to bed sooner. So give me your top eight right now. So number one is Apex 2015 for top eights. Number two yeah. is. Uh, MLG Anaheim 2014. MLG 2014. Three is MLG Las Vegas 2006. Four is Genesis 1. Five is the big house. Four. Mm -hmm. uh, six is... Genesis 2. Six is Genesis 2. Seven is Zenith 2012. I'm surprised... Trying no game over. Why would I include game over? I don't. I can't even watch all those sets. <laughs> I'm trying to remember my my number eight. Pound. Wait, yeah, pound pound three. Pound three. Uh, I think pound three is a bit overrated. Um, Whoa. Um, I'm trying to remember what my one. Uh, oh, Evo World Evo 2007 was really good. I don't know. No, Evo Evo 2013. How, how can we be so no, stupid? No, 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 EVO 2013 is ridiculously overrated. Wobbles is wrong. No, look at all the duds. Mango Ice, Armada Shroomed. Oh yeah, Mango Armada was like 2-0, wasn't it? No, no, I'll give it to e No, wait, EVO 2014. EVO 2014 is my number 8. Yeah, because Hbox overcomes Armada twice, he beats PP, the favorite. Mango H-Box sets were both really good. I'm trying to think of other really good top eights. Um, um, me too. There's a... Ooh, Pound 4. Pound 4 ends in a dud, though. It does end in a dud. But, we had Amsa Armada. Uh... Then, Mango H box and Mango H box winners finals yeah, was really winners, good. Yeah, that's what kind of sucks. People like people remember Mango like the disrespect jab, but the first set was like five games last off. 
It was game five last dog, yeah. And then there was a... Wait, was this a tournament where... I AMSA... AMSA J-Man... AMSA Zoo... Uh, Armada Mewtwo King at this tournament, I think, was stupid. Wait, what about Apex 2012 Top 8? Because of Javi. Uh, there was Javi... <sighs> H box is run. How could I forget a Apex twenty twelve? I'm an idiot. That was like my first national Apex, grade now. Apex twenty thirteen is also a really good top eight, if I'm not mistaken. Dude, Apex just has all the good top eights. I said this before. Wait, no, you said Apex twenty fourteen was your last one on the on number eight. Was it? I don't Dude, there's so many good ones. I know no, I'll give it to Apex twenty twelve because nostalgia. Over 2014. Yeah. Because the thing is, 2012 is Javi. It has H-Box's run. It has H-Box overcome, or winning the first set against Armada. Yeah. Um, um, Arma oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, and H-Box beat Mango for the first time. Um, Armada bodied Mango in his finals, which made me really happy. Um... Javi PP set a tournament. Javi Hacks. Javi Hacks was really yeah. good. No, not the one that Hacks won, the one that Javi yeah, won, but no, both I'm were not, really good. I'm not talking about Welcome Back Hacks. That, that's a year later. But that, that set's better. But <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And now I need to check Apex 2013 just to ensure. No, Apex 2013 has PP resetting a lot of yeah, PB resetting. Oh, yeah, PB music game. PB music game. Mango beating. Or. Serious music game beating Mango for the first time in like five years. Yeah. And then there was, uh. Then PB resetting on Armada. Mm -hmm. PB music game. I gotta, I gotta look it up because I forgot the bracket doesn't exist anymore. Who beat Hbox in Apex 2013? Like in winners? No, no, in losers. Because I know in winners was the set where he lost. I think it was. I think. It, I think it was Mango. Is there a set good in Apex 2013? I forgot. That, yeah, there was. There was a. Um, there was Mango hacks. Oh my god! It was only six minutes. Oh my god. Um, Shroomed KK. PP Mutsu King, Armada Hbox, Mango Hbox, Shroom Mutsu King. Shroom Mutsu King was 15 minutes? What? Wait, what about Kings of Cali? Did they have any good top 8s? Actually, not not like super amazing. Just Kings of nah. Cali 4 is the only one. Wait, no, I, I just remember for... Oh, it's, it's like, it's like I just did. Wait, Big House 6? Big House 6 is a really good top 8. Does it? I don't remember it. It had what? It had Meech King Wizzy, Hbox, Pew Pew, Hbox Armada, Mango Armada Grand Finals. Oh, S Fat Ice. S Fat Ice. Amazing set. That's a terrible set. It's amazing. I don't, I don't care what you say. That's the greatest one sided. No, second greatest one sided set of all time. Actually, I take, I take that back. The Big House 6, like, for its top 8, it's really just the Mango Armada sets. No, we talking S Fat Ice. That's not a good set. What are you talking about? S Fat just like S overextends and gets himself in the corner. No, Ice actually, I don't, I don't like it when people say S Fat played mediocre. Ice actually, literally, just played amazing. That's it. I disagree. I disagree with you, but um, I also think, but like S Fat Ice, I think is the second best one-sided set of all time. What's the first bet? One again? Man Mango Ken. Oh my god. Dude, that set makes me smile every time. <laughs> dude, no, dude, dude. You, dude, if we ask me to come with the best top 8 ever is, he'll be like, FC Diamond. That's why they took it off oh, YouTube. Oh, he'll he'll definitely say FC Diamond. I know he'll say FC Diamond. Wait, for amazing top 8s, I, I just realized. What about OC3? Mm, but we can't even watch OC3. OC2? We can't even watch OC2. Yeah, those aren't like... Yeah. They, they don't count because we can't watch them but like man FC Diamonds because at PC 3-0'd Mewtwo King in winner's finals of FC Diamond and Mewtwo King like destroyed him in grand finals is EVO 2007 a good I was thinking EVO 2007 is a decent top 8 we had uh we had Chu Chillin 
Ken Chu, Ken Mango and Winners. Uh, there was Hugs PC. Hugs PC. There was Hugs Mango. There was Eddie DSF. Um, which is the most random top eight set of all time. There was Ken. Ken PC was really good, actually. Ken Mango and Losers, greatest set of all time. Dude, you uh, know what's weird? Hugs was one stock away from being the world champion of melee. He was the world champion of melee for a point. In my in my in my title list, anyway. He has the second longest reign of all time because he went to play brawl, so he didn't do any melee tournaments. That it does, dude. Two hundred eighty days. <laughs> dude, that's so weird. Hugs was a genuine like stock and gimp away from beating Ken at Evil World two thousand seven. That would have been the first time he ever beat Ken too. And he wouldn't have had to beat Chu on the way. Yeah. As. Okay. Yeah, he is. Uh, was there anything else we really need? I think we covered everything for this podcast. Yeah, I think we did. Wait, let me double check. Uh. Hmm. Sorry, guys, for people listening. I'm looking up our jet. Royal Cook Flash, Mango's Legacy. Uh, we talked a little bit about regional rivalries. We talked about top eights. We have your top eight, top eights. Um, does Royal Flush have a chance of being ranked in the top eight, top eights? Maybe I don't think so. I think you. Could. I think I, I think I think you. I think if you did, I wouldn't be too mad. But I, for me, it's just outside. I just feel like between Shroom, because Shroomed Moon, there's all three Mango Armada sets. There's Shroomed Moon, there's Mango... Shroomed. There's, or there's Leffen H-Box, there's Mango Shroomed. Mango Shroomed is the best set of the tournament. I think it might actually be Royal... Because the thing is, Royal Flush has... Because e- even the lopsided sets are entertaining. The only one that's not entertaining is Armada H-Box. Nintendo Drug Fox is entertaining, and Latin Drug Fox is entertaining, and Mango Drug Fox is entertaining. I guess. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd give it the, it though, but I understand if you did. No, that's fair. But it's definitely an all-time great top eight, even if it's not a top yeah. eight. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be. It's the best top eight of the year so far. I think it edges out CEO Dreamland. Okay. Do you want to talk about NYC versus Tri-State? NYC versus Tri-State? Yeah. NYC versus Tri-State. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, NYC <laughs> versus MDVA. Because I was hearing well, a good amount of discussion about it from a secret source. Who's your secret source? I can't tell you. It's a secret source. Damn it. Um, I think that Tri State's better. Yeah, but if you, no, I, I definitely I definitely think that Tri State as a whole is better. But I'm saying NYC. Just NYC? Yeah. Well I guess I think NYC I, I think NYC's better. Um No, I think NYC is better, but how do you think they fare against I think MDBA actually matches up really well in Cruz. I, I agree, because I, I think they they have um they have so many people to neutralize Moon. Um, Slocks Slocks they have Lod Disc Kid they have Lod um, They also have Smash God for Disc Kid Yeah And then Chu Can just be sent in against anybody And do well But the thing uh, is MDV is the end oh, wait, No no sorry I just realized Okay. And then Ch- Chilling could be sent in Versus Smuckers um, oh, they have so many people that could go in against Diskit. What am I saying? Yeah, I think I think if anything, the the problem for MDVA would be Smuckers, and even then, Cool Line beat them. So I mean, I mean, but Smuckers threw the set, and like I don't think Smuckers played particularly well that tournament. Like I would consider that set more an outlier. Um, so I think I I feel. Go to get about Smuckers versus most of the people in MDVA. 
Yeah, I think Chillin. I think if if Smuckers went out, they would MDVA would send Chillin or riskily send Junebug or Plank. I would save Junebug for Moon because I think Junebug would beat Moon. On his uh, Junebug on his counter pick would beat Moon. What about just sending Chu against? Oh wait, no, because NYC is Swedish. Chu could beat Swedish. That's what I'm saying. Like they would, they would save Chu for. Swedish. Oh my God! They'd ha they'd have to make sure Swedish goes Peach, or else that's like the freest win for Chu. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Chu, Chu looked bad against Shroom Sheep. Listen, do you do you want to? Are you going to actually argue to me that Chu? Would lose to Swedish Ishik no. when the entire reason Swedish picked up Peach was because Ishik couldn't beat you. No, no, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't. Yeah, don't don't that. argue that. No, I would not. I I would predict a three stock. Um, no, no, I'm I'm saying that the reason I brought up Swedish is that they wouldn't send in, MDVA wouldn't send in Chu against Moon. They'd send in Chu against Swedish because they're both the best players on their crews. I mean, they could send in Chu against Fox. Do you do you really? Are we that high on June to where we'd say June against Moon is reasonable? Yes. Is it more reasonable than Mod or Smash God? Yes. Even if Law and Smash God are, are like significant, or not, but like noticeable tiers above June as a player. I yeah, they might be, but I think that actually, well, like the thing is, I can't. No, cause, even, I can't no, even cause say June's been. Because June's like 5-0 against Smash God this year. He's taken multiple sets off lot. He beat Cobal, who beat Smash God at CEO Dreamland. Yeah, June beating Cobal and like being super dominant against both Smash God and Zane makes me think by eye test and results he could be top 100-ish. I think he definitely is top 100. I have him in my 70s right now. Is June better than Milk? I think June is better than Milkman right now. I think June's better than Milkman right now as well. Because he also attends more, so... I think June might be top five in MDVA right now. I have Chu, Smash God, Lod, and I think I might have June back at four. Ahead of Chillin. Ahead of Chillin. What has Chillin done this year? Tell me. He's lost to Aphidge. That's what he's done. Uh. He has zero top 50 wins this year. Zero. Yeah, but again, that's only in the last fight, like, if Chillin actually went to a lot more, I'm sure he would get a top 50 win. Yes, it's only in the last half year. That's right. It's crazy. In the last half year, he's had zero top 50 wins with losses to Aphidge, Amsa, and more. And Allen. Does NYC get slot? I, I, I think it's only fair if NYC gets slots. Yeah, NYC definitely gets slots. Um, MDVA gets Chu. So, would you what would it be? Would would it be five v five or ten v ten? I think in ten v ten, uh, MDVA has a much better chance because they match up really well. But in five v five, I think New York has the talent edge. Is ten in ten v ten? Um, would you give them? Would you give us IBDW? Because he lives in upstate, but he comes to NYC a lot. Uh, wait, you'd want IBDW over like Rio beat or, or yes. Maybe? Yes. Definitely over maybe. Does NYC get Diz or no? Should we get Diz? Would that be fair? He's on your PR, so I feel like you should. Yeah, that's true. He's number two in NorCal and in Tri-State. I don't know if I'd send Diz out against MTDA, though, because they have the IC Destroyers. I mean, you could probably send him out against, like, Hat. Yeah, but they wouldn't have Hat as an alternate. They'd have, like, Milkman or Red. Man, but it, it'd be difficult. I don't know. I'd probably put this kid as, like, an alternate. The thing is, like, Tri-State is really good against, like, certain kinds of spaces. But MDVA is, like, all the super, like, aggressive Fox players. Yeah. I would send in Smuckers to fight Red, probably. There are, like, super aggressive Fox players that are either good at the Fox Ditto, or they're good against all the slow Fox matchups. Yeah. So they're, they're not I, slow fox. They're good at all like the non volatile fox matchups. Like all the MDVA foxes are really good against Ices, they're good against Peach, they're good against Mark, they're good against Sheik. 
I don't know how experienced they are against Falco. They're good in the ditto, but they're not good against Falcon except for Chillin. And Chew, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, so would it be 5v5 then? So who would your 5 be for MDVI? Uh, Chu, Smash God, Lod, Chillin, and Red. And Red? I'd put Red ahead of June. I would go... I still, go even, though, even if June has a match advantage, I still trust Red enough as a versatile pick. I'd go, I'd go Chu, Smash God, Lod, June Bug... And red. My alts would be June and Zane. My alts would be June, Zane, and Milkman. My alts would be Chillin, Zane, and Milkman, probably. No, Plank. Not Milkman. Let me double no. check MDV's PR right now. Oh, what about Jerry? No, J I mean, Jerry, again, no, Jerry's really good, but you could just get the same thing in Milkman. It's true. No, I think Jerry's better than Milkman right now. Yeah, I, I guess by the, the result. Yeah, yeah, it's Chew, Smash, Smash God, Chillin'. Is that, is that wrong that I put... The thing is, I feel like with putting Zane and Smash God in the same crew, I just would rather... I would rather give... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather Zane be an alternate. I'd rather Zane be an alternate, or we just replace Zane with... Or, or we just replace him with uh, Milkman or Jerry. Yeah, so I, I think Chew and Smash God and Lot are, like, obvious. So like looking, yeah, looking at the MDVA crew, it's like it's just they're good against Fox. They're solid against Marth and Sheik. They're very good. At, they're extremely good against Ice Climbers. They're pretty good against Peach, I think, or at least like they have enough experience where they can pass by in it and weak against Falcon, except for Chillin and Chew. And I guess Cool Lime if he makes it on the cruise. Yeah. Cool Lime's gonna go way up on the next PR. He'll probably be above Wembo and Hat. Whereas Tri State is really good against Spacey's. Um, are they good against Marth or not? I, I can't tell. <sighs> we're, we're not. I'll be honest, I don't think we're very good against Marth. Does Tri or not Tri State, does NYC start DJ or no? Why would we start DJ? Because he's your number five, isn't he? No, he's our number six. We got Swedish, Diz, Moonslock, Smuckers, DJ. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, though, I'd, pro I'd probably bench Diz for this specific crew battle. Just because you think the... Yeah, because the trifecta, or the, like... Chillin, Lod, and Red slash insert MDVA Fox is just really scary. So I'd probably go Swedish, Moon, Slock, Smuckers, then... I'd send Rio, I'd send Rio or maybe. He's just really good in crews. I'd go IBDW. You'd go IBDW or Rio or maybe? Yes, he's ranked way higher than them. Yeah, but one, Peach is really super good in crews and less volatile. And I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd pick a fox did fox against MDVA that they're all really good at that. Like, I might go two Saint. Is MDVA good against Oh no, because they have they have Aglet and Ace of Flakes. Two Saints better than both of them by a lot. Yeah, I think he's significantly better than or based on two results. Saint, two two Saints definitely a top five puff. Actually, yeah. Wait, wait, no, no, two Saints trash. I was gonna say this two, I was going to ask if Two Saint proved that MDVA isn't good against Falcon, and then I remember Two Saint is NYC. Maybe I'll bench Slox. Slox is good against Smash God. He's, good. He'd be, he's gotten a lot better in the Fox Ditto. He looks to be getting better against Peach, but I don't know how he. Slox isn't good against Smash God. Yeah, he is. They're even. They're even. He got destroyed by Smash God last time. And what happened before that? They haven't played a long, in a long time. That's the only time. Slox, like, whooped him at Olympus. You know how long ago Olympus was? It's like seven months ago. 
When was the last time Smash got in Slots played? It was at the Apollo that Swedish that um, Slots lost IBDW. Oh, yeah, then he was playing like shit at that tournament. It's whatever. No, IBDW definitely just straight up destroyed him. I, I mean, I'm sure it's a little bit, a bit of both. I'd go, yeah, so I'd go Swedish Moon Smuckers, definitely. Um, I'm torn between Slox, J Flex, Two Saint, Rio Beat, Vans. But do we agree that do we agree that the wild card in this is Smuckers? Yeah. I might go Vans. I think I'll go Vans. The thing is, I this is gonna sound crazy. I think in five v five, New NYC just they out quote unquote talent. Uh, MDVA just because. Really? Yeah. Well. MDV has gotten a lot better recently. Yeah, between Chill and Lot and Red, like Red is the only one that's probably not top fifty. And he's still really good. I don't have uh, I don't have Chillin in my in my crew. You replace him with Zane, right? No, but June. I think June June is a pretty safe like because he's chic. He's chic that counters Marth. I he, also think I also think June's just top five in MDVA right now. I have to look at the results to be sure. I got I got Lod, Smash God, Chew, Red, and June Bug. But Lod, so you have Chew, Smash God, Lod, Red, and June. Yeah. Oh wow! So no Zane and no Chillin. Nah. Well, I don't need Zane. Smash God's just Zane, but better. <laughs> And you don't need chillin'. No, because Red's just chillin' but better. But chillin' is super good against... You don't trust chillin' against Falcon anymore? No, I do. But it's like... You're saying I, feel it's, like we can it's, I feel like we can make do. You're saying it's not worth the possibility of Moon just like three stocking chillin' on Yoshi's? Yeah. Because Smash God destroyed chillin' last time. So... Smash got six out of him last time. Um. Uh, what about 10v10? I feel. The thing is, I feel like in 10v10, it's like. 10v10 just feels way too lopsided for me. Because <laughs> we would have. Lopsided in, 10, in, 10, in 10v10, I would definitely give it, let Diz in. So it would be Swedish Diz, Moon, Slock, Smuckers, DJ, IBDW, J Flex, Two Saint, Rio Beat. Or no, Two Saint Vans, not Rio Beat. You take Jaden over Rio at this point. I think Jaden's better than Rio, just like as a player. For me, or for MDVA, I think it would be like choose Smash God, Lod, Lod Red, Zane, Chillin, June. But I don't think they, I don't think they'd have Plank because it's too similar. And then I think they'd have Milk, they'd have Milkman and Cool Lime. I put Plank in over Milkman. Or Jer Jerry and Cool Lime. I put Plank over Jerry and Milkman. Plank is a Marth killer and a good at cheap dittos. I don't think. Yeah. I think it? Plank's really good. I think Plank's better than Milkman and Jerry, and Milkman and Jerry are redundant too because we already have two foxes. Yeah, but you're gonna have two foxes over two sheiks. Two sheiks. But like, why? Why would I pick Plank when, when I have June? It's like the same reason you were talking about with Smash God and saying. Why, why? Why would you pick Jerry or um? Jerry or Milkman when you have Red and Chillin already, because which literally do which literally do everything both of them do but better. Because they're because they're still portable in other matchups, whereas like with Chief, you don't think you don't think Plank is portable in other matchups. Plank is like good in the shoot ditto, very good against Marth, and okay against Floaties. Yeah, Plank's really good against Luigi. Just like a fun fact. Jerry and Milkman are. Very good against, I guess, I guess Jerry now, but like, very good against. Not, I guess not Jerry, apparently. It's like both, both Jerry and not Jerry, I guess. But Milkman, but Milkman and Jerry are both Icy's destroyers. They're both very good at the box, ditto. They're both good against Falco. They're solid against Marth. I wouldn't go with Milkman, because I think Milkman's starting to fall off. 
I just don't think he attends that much. I mean, he lost a 40 second. 40 second is a puff or muff or somewhat. Um, so yeah, he's a, he's a puff. Oh, from Tri State. Oh, no, but we have two Saints. Anyways, I, I think it would be a really interesting crew battle. I heard people talk about it. I th Honestly, I think it would either be really close or Tri-State will destroy them. I think I think I, I think we both agree that Smuckers is the wild card. If he doesn't get like if he doesn't get wobbled by Cool Lime or get bodied, I think quite frankly, quite frankly, if they send a Cool Lime against Smuckers. I have very high faith that Smuckers will beat him solidly. All right. That's fair. You you watch your players. So, okay. I think that's it. I think we've officially talked about everything in the podcast. Yeah. All right. Time to stop recording.